You got it locked on Rodeo Radio. Yeah, Dr. Dre is in full effect, and I gotta tell y'all a little something. Eze is down with us. MC Ring, you know he's down with us. DJ Yella is down with us. Arabian Prince, you know he's down with us. Tony A. The Wizard is down with us. JJ Fag is down with us. Timmy T, you know he's down with us. DJ Poo Boy is down with us. Toddy T and Spade, they're down with us. My boy Ice Cube, you know he's down with us. I like to mention, so pay attention to where I'm from. Compton, but the tapes are from the rodeo. My name is Dre, listen while I play. And by the way, I'm also down with NWA. Yo, Steve at the rodeo is down with us. Slang and funky tapes, it is a must. We're number one. Welcome everybody to Rhodium Radio episode 90. Hopefully I got that right, 90. We need 10 more to hit 100, okay? <laughs> but Ooh. first of all, let me go ahead and give a shout out to uh, P Lifestyle Clothing out of Longview, Texas. P Lifestyle Clothing out of Longview, Texas. They, uh, they blessed me with some socks, some shirts, um, some more shirts. So I want to thank you. I think they're dope. P Lifestyle Clothing out of Longview, Texas. Much love, much respect to you guys. Um, other than that, we've had a little hiccup with uh, the Blu-ray for the documentary, so we'll um, have that out hopefully soon. Something wrong on their end, not on ours. We did our job, but you know what? We got to depend on them. Other than that, the four the eight CDs, the four pack for thirty dollars is still available at documixery.com if you guys still want to view the documixery is still available on our website for uh unlimited streaming as well other than that once again i encourage you to subscribe and follow us on instagram freaky tales podcast freaky tales podcast at uh, youtube or freaky tales podcast at um uh, on instagram but without further ado uh we'll get some more of those uh, plugs in at during the break Without further ado, please allow me to introduce all the way from the city of Oxnard in the motherfucking building. Hey, whoop. Hey, Trouble kid. can I enter? Uh, hey, first of all, hey, let me say something. Hey, shout out Tony the Wizard and shout out my boy, Young Quicks. You know, coming from Oxnard too. Hey, much love. How you doing, brother? Good, good, good. How about you? Good, good. Hey, you know what? How was the drive coming over here? It was long, but it was great because I was with my manager. I was with, uh, hey, shout out Bella the Rapper. You already know, whoop. Hey. That'll work, man. Yeah. That'll work. So, you know what? I know it's uh, Wednesday, um, and we're kind of far away from the weekend that just passed, but how was your weekend? How did you spend it, man? It was good, bro. It was great. I was with the fan bam. You already know. Hey, any minute with the fan bam, you, you know you got to yeah. cherish, cherish it and shit, you know? Yeah. So, it was great. It okay. It was great. We now, went I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish up. Uh, we went to the beach. You know, we, we had a, cu a couple beers. Hey. Anybody watching Saloon, we had a couple beers, you know, uh, we just passed the field, you know. That'll work. Uh, now, uh, do you surf or boogie board? No, but shit, I always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> just go buy one, man. Just go buy a boogie board and jump on it, man. Hell yeah. You, um, I don't know if you've seen a, there's like a fucking, they fucking, the water, when it goes like the pressure, when you fuck, there's like a little fucking water jetpack and shit. Right. But that I want to do that shit. I don't know. Uh, that's just dope. That'll work, man. We'll look into yeah. it and see how much it costs and go for it, man. You're still young enough to do it. I may yeah. even want to try it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? Now, I see you wearing a Clippers jersey. Are you a Clippers fan? Nah, I'm a Lakers fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Lakers fan, but shit, I, my shirt got dirty. You know, I had to put something up. You know, I had to come fresh. But so. you're still representing, so. Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, shout out the Clippers. Hey, much love. Okay, so you're a Laker fan. Uh, what's your favorite football team? Raiders. Raiders, okay. Uh, uh, have you seen the... Oh, yeah, you were just in Vegas not too long ago, huh? Yeah, so you I, well, I seen the stadium. Yeah, okay. I seen the stadium. Looks really nice. That shit's bad. That shit's bad. It, it, isn't it kind of fucked up right now that COVID hit and we can't even go to our own team's football games? Yeah, it is fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, I was actually interested in... Because uh, I'm a... I'm a 
big soccer fan. Okay. I I love soccer. So like for the fucking mundial, I was fucking really looking forward to it, but I think they're gonna cancel it because of uh the pandemic too. Yeah. 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 Who who's your favorite soccer team? Mexico. Okay, you gotta think about that one? Nah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. What about um favorite baseball team? Dodgers. If you have one. Dodgers? Yeah. Of course. Dodger Blue. Dodger Blue. Hey, man. Dodgers, yeah. So so uh what about boxing? Are you a boxing fan? Hell yeah. I, I was actually a boxer myself. Shout out um Canelo putting on for the Raza right now. And shout out um wow, what's his name? Randy Garcia? Nah, 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 nah. Uh, he was posted. Uh, hey, shout out YB. Actually, he was he. They made a, a new video. He mm-hmm. me, he was actually, and or uh, and the Ruiz. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and shout out Ruiz. Andy. That's dope. Did you watch that fight when yeah. he knocked, when oh, he yeah. knocked that dude out? Did you watch yeah. the rematch? Yeah, well, he lost, but still he got he got heart. Yeah, of course. Aztec warrior. Shout out. Dope, dope, man. So, um, where exactly did you grow up in, man? Like uh, Mexico. Uh, okay. I, w- I was raised in Oxnard. But I uh, was born in Mexico. Okay, okay. Yeah. For those that may not know or who are wondering, what part of Mexico are, are you and your family from? Hey, Guanajuato, GTO. Shout out, my, hey, shout out my gente. Shout out my <laughs> gente from Guanajuato. Straight up. That'll work. Yeah. You know, growing up, I watched the movie that my father introduced me to about luchadores. And it was called Las Momias de Guanajuato. Hey, let's, hey every, every time I bring Guanajuato, they're like, Las Momias, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out, hey, shout out, that's momias. That'll right. work, man. So you grew up there, or as I said, you were born there. If you is that what you said? Yeah, I was oh, born there. Okay, and uh, when did you come over here? About how old were you? Like I was five. I was five. Okay, so you moved to Oxnard, and that's pretty much where. Yeah, uh, that's where, where I was raised and everything. Okay. Hey, shout out Oxnard. Actually, shout out. Hey, sh- hey, shout out the Raza right now, putting in work, making the moves and shit. Hey, and when I see the Raza, shout out my enemies too. Straight up. Why would you want to shout those guys out? Because I see I, I see them making moves too and like you know Rasa and shit. Like shit, I see a lot of artists like working with the enemies and shit. Like I feel like we need to unite. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you one hundred percent, you know. Yeah. A- instead of putting each other down, should up be uh, lifting should, each other. Yeah, we, we need to unite. It's time it's time someone makes a difference. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. And uh, and that's what we're doing now is, is speaking on things like this Hell so yeah. that people can listen and people can wake up and people can start moving and thinking in a different direction. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah. that's a good thing, man. Uh, you come from a big family, man, brothers and sisters? I'm going to tell you straight up. Um, yeah, I do come from a big family, but I feel like Mex- Mexicans, like it's a small world that like I could like meet this fool. That could probably be my cousin and shit. Like, <laughs> hey, it's a small world. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm one of 10 kids. One of my, my aunts had 15 kids. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'd go to Mexico and meet people that I didn't know who in the hell they were. And I said, ¿Cómo te llamas? Soy tu primo. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, but that's just the way it is. I you know. know. You know, a lot of people say we're like rabbits. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, at least I know I am. But anyways, that's a different uh, podcast. But yeah. uh, other than that, uh, <laughs> uh, you say you play, uh, well, any sports, you, you mentioned boxing. Yeah, uh, soccer. I actually I'm a natural born athlete. I'm an athlete, my boy. Really? Yeah, hell yeah. I, okay. I love all sports. Anything okay. that's healthy for the body. Okay. You know, hey, sh- hey, shout out Doctor Savy too. Okay. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with Doctor Savy Herbalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 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 tell us a little bit about him. Well, uh, uh, I believe it's a uh, the, mo- the 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 hey look the pharmacy like the, you know how they um. Uh, Cause there's a lot of people with anxiety and shit, and right. a men- mental illness is a is a big thing. Right. And people people who don't have it think that it's a, it's a joke, but it's not a joke. So sh- hey, shout out all my people that got anxiety and shit. I feel you. Okay. Straight up. So, the thing you should do fast, fast for a couple of days, detox your body. Uh, exercise is the best thing. That'll work, man. So, back to my question. Did you play any sports growing up? Yeah, soccer. Okay, soccer. Boxing, you say you, you did a lot, of, uh, a lot of boxing as well or no? Yeah, I did. I did boxing. Okay. okay. Which one did you enjoy better out of those two? Soccer. Yeah? Yeah. It, it, now, one thing about soccer, you got to be a great athlete. You got to have great stamina. <laughs> yeah. Hella, hella. Condition. Condition is the most... Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? Now let me ask you this. Say that I went to kick it at your house and uh, it was just me and you, and I said, "Put on a movie." What kind of movie would you put on, man? What do you like to watch? I put um Apocalypto. Oh, oh, okay. Now why? Because it teaches uh, Apocalypto. They filmed it in Mexico, actually. Mm -hmm. They filmed it in Mexico, and like it, it teaches us about the raza people. Like when people see it, they think they filmed it in a. Uh, like they think they're Indians. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a little fucked up, and right I'm a, I'm a little intoxicated. But take your time, brother. Yeah. Take your time, cause we can't edit nothing out. So yeah, yeah, I take know. Take your time, but we're good. Okay, Apocalypto. One of my honestly, honestly, I think that's a really, really great movie. Probably one of my top twenty movies. Yeah. Mel Gibson, I thought did a great job. He's, Hell yeah! Hey, he, shout out Mel Gibson and shit. <laughs> shout out, he's a shout out good Mel, ass Mel motherfucking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, he's uh, he did that one. He did Passion of the Christ. Did some that good shit movies. was another badass movie. Passion of the Christ. Yeah, that's another one. I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Okay, okay. Now I'm not going to ask you to explain what the difference is, but I understand. So, uh, with that being said, um, g growing up in a Mexican home, uh, yeah. what type of music would you say you were raised with? What type of music was your mother, father play, etc.? Rock. Rock music? Yeah, rock music. Really? Okay, give rock. us some give us a couple of rock bands that you could remember. Queen. Shout out Queen. That's my favorite band. Queen, hmm. uh Led Zeppelin. Wow. You yeah. know what? Uh not too long ago I wore a Led Zeppelin when I interviewed Mr. D a shirt. Hey, shout out Mr. D. Shout out Mr. D. And this is a Queen coaster right here. Uh so Oh, this is a different coaster. I thought it was the same one. Something you may not know, but I was actually label mates with Queen. What? So That's I got to meet everybody except uh, the main singer Freddie Mercury because he was months away from passing away. Yeah. So you know, he, may he rest well, in he peace. Died, um, from uh, AIDS, no? Yeah, from AIDS. Yeah. 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 And um, but yeah, uh, I was label mates. Uh, I love Queen. Hey, did you get a ch chance to see that movie Bohemian Rhapsody? Dope ass fucking movie, bro. Yeah, really good movie. Well, he actually threw um girl with the frontal de teeth and shit. You mm -hmm. know how. I don't know if he had a condition with his teeth right. and shit, but hey, trip out that shit made his voice even better. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he thought that if he it had a great span. Yeah, that if he got his teeth fixed, it, it would take away from his voice. Yeah, whether that's true or not, maybe that was just a more of a mental thing, or maybe yeah. he was telling the truth. You know, so now, so you grew up with rock. So your mother and your father will both play rock music. My father. Okay. Yeah, but my my mother is straight Mexican. Like she she don't speak English. You know, rock is pure Spanish. She was from Jenny Rivera. Okay. So yeah. Okay. That'll hey, work. R.I.P. Yeah, that'll work, man. Well, my mother and my father didn't speak English either, so it was kind of hard having parent conferences. Yeah. When uh, and they would tell me certain things to to translate to my mother, and of course I would give them the wrong translation. You know, <laughs> your son is a bad. Estás en la escuela. You know, he's doing real bad in school. Que todo está bien, ama. That's uh -huh. what I would say. So, yeah, I would get away with a lot of that shit, but eventually my sister would go and I would get my ass beat. So, <laughs> but now, um, growing up in Oxnard, okay, you told me you, you uh, Spanish and uh, rock music. What was it about rap music that intrigued you when you first heard it? I mean, it wasn't even rap music. In general, I fell in love with the, with the melodies. It was just a passion for like music, straight up. Like when I, I fell in love with rock, to be honest. Okay. Like I fuck with all type, all the genres and shit. Like music, quote it. Music is a bridge between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. okay. I feel like music is everything. Like when you go to a party, we vibing because we listening to music. Right. Like it's just the mood, my boy. Like that's it. that music is everything. Oh man, and and uh, growing up, did you play any instruments at all? No, but I wanted to play the guitar. I actually tried playing it, but I wasn't gifted in that, you know. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, but I know. I wanted to play the piano too and shit. I wanted, to, bro. I want to play every instrument. <laughs> to be honest with you, the violin, everything. Now, now, why didn't you? Is it? Uh, I know you were in sports. Did that take away from your time, or did you just didn't have the patience to learn? Oh no. I always had time for uh, music, but I just 
I just couldn't like get it. I just couldn't get it. My homie would try to uh, that fool would try to fucking uh, mentor me actually okay. and playing the guitar, but I just never got it and shit. I wish I was gifted. Hey, shout out Ado. Hey, Ado boys from fucking Oxnard uh, doing corridos. There's a lot of mo- there's a lot a lot of fools fucking singing and shit. Keep it up. Much okay. love. Okay, and uh, did you ever try singing before? Uh, before you're oh, rapping? I suck at singing, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at singing, yeah. Now, is it because you think you suck or somebody told you you suck? Oh, no, because I, I, I think I suck. I know I suck. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you listen to a lot of Spanish music? Hell yeah. Okay, Hell g- yeah. give us a couple of people that you listen to. Omar Ruiz, Chalino Sanchez. Hey, Chalino Sanchez. Fucking uh, Selena. Yeah. Selena. She... she Hey, but she bad. <laughs> hey, she fucking talented as fuck. Jenny Rivera. Yeah. Who else? Let me think. That's, that's all I could think of right now, but there's so many Spanish artists that are talented. Okay. Oh, yeah. Much love. That'll work. That'll work. Now, at what age or would you say that you began to take interest in rapping? Since I was in my mama's womb. Okay, can you explain that? It's just like, damn, music, like, music is everything, my boy. Like, when I hear a beat, like, even if you go, like, like I could do, like, we could it create, music is creativity, straight mm-hmm. up. Okay, so you're saying you were born with it, in other words. You were born with music. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, I believe everyone is born with the. Uh, Cause they they feel if they feel the melody if they feel the beat, everybody got everybody got a mood, no? Like right. if you hear some like rock, I um, it's hard to explain, my boy. Music is always hard to explain. Okay, all right. Uh, now, you said uh, you were pretty much born with music in you. So, at what age now? If somebody wants to know, to be more specific, around what age would you say you started writing? You know, down down lyrics. When I was like 11. Okay, 11 years old. Yeah. Now, let's let's go back to 11 years old. Who were you listening to during that time uh, as far as rap is concerned? Tupac. Okay, Tupac. Give me a couple of more so I can have some kind of idea. Tupac, Scarface, uh, DJ Quick. Who oh, uh, Let me think. DJ Quick. Hey, Toker. Okay. Brown side. Yeah. Hey, shout out Toker. Okay. Shout out Toker. Shout, now, hey, shout out Brownside. Shout out Brownside. Okay. Now, what about any East Coast artists? Are you a fan of East Hell Coast yeah. rap? Hell okay. yeah. That's where hip hop started, actually. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, g- give me a couple of, maybe at a, what does Trouble Kid at 11 years old listen to when it comes to East Coast hip hop, if any? Puff Diddy. Okay. Okay. Um... Biggie Smalls. Biggie. Biggie's dope. Biggie's dope. He's always been dope. Who else? There's a lot of... Hey, shout out to East Coast. Okay. Shout out East Coast. Much love from the West Coast. Okay. Now, say you had to pick... Um, say you had to pick between one of these two. Tupac and Biggie. Who would Tupac. you... Okay. Now, is it because he's just from out here? or is it, Or is it because you just can relate to his music better? Because uh, he shouted out the Mexicans. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be LA without the Mexicans. Hey, shout out my black folks. Okay. Shout and out my black folks. You know who did that as well? Uh, Nipsey. Yeah, hey. I rap P. Nipsey the Great. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that'll work. That'll work, man. So, other than that, um, right now, um, do you listen at all to any type of Chicano rap? Hell yeah. Uh, uh, give me a couple of groups so people can kind of get an idea. Cujo the we- Savage, Misfit, Soto, Misfit Soto. Let me see. There's a lot of fucking talented Chicano artists right now. Yeah. A lot of them. Misfit Soto. Let me think. Let me think. Southland Brownside. Shout out Travi G. Shout out Lil Danger. Shout out to hey, shout out to Ch- all the Chicano artists. Y'all doing your thing right now. Okay, now let's uh uh let's go to the girls. Any dope females that you know? Bella in the house, Bella the rapper. She okay. go hard. She go hard. Uh Snow the product. 
That's a lot of dope ass females right now. Hey, shout out the females. All the fucking dope ass females right now. Yeah. Shake yeah. the fuck up. And I do want to encourage uh, more females to get at me, you know, uh, to email me at rodenradio at gmail.com simply because me growing up in the late 80s, uh, you know, being involved in hip hop and all throughout the 90s, yeah. there, there was rarely any females getting any shine. Uh, and I could actually say that I could probably come with one hand how many females were actually active in the game. T today, there's a lot, lot more that are getting known. Uh, thanks to social media, thanks to uh, YouTube and stuff like that, that we, we can actually see now, uh, um, you know, these females rapping. If you want to interview, if you're a female, get at me. I, li I like to be more lenient towards females and get them on here a little bit quicker because I've always seen females kind of get the bad end of the stick when it comes to radio, when it comes to interviews, etc. So I would like to shine a little bit more light on females. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Man, though, we got to, hey, we got to shine more light on on our females you know like if you're a guy if you're if you're a real motherfucker you know we come from a female so we gotta show love we gotta protect our females it's time hey save our children straight the fuck up <laughs> you, you know what now um uh, let me ask you this um what is one thing that you miss doing that you can't do now because of this pandemic Honestly, nothing because this, pande this pandemic ain't stopping nothing. This pandemic ain't stopping the grind. Okay. But it, one thing that it is stopping, and it's sad to say for everyone, uh, shows. Oh, there you go. Shows. You're right. Okay. Yeah. I uh, want to perform for my people. I wanna, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Do, do you enjoy performing? Hell yeah, I love it. Yeah? I love it. You know, the sad thing is that I meet guys that love it like yourself, and then I meet other people that say, I don't really care to. Yeah. So, but... Believe it or not, that's where the money's at right now. So, yeah, See, simply because uh, music has changed. You know, now uh, you know you don't. People don't buy vinyls. People don't buy as much as hard copies anymore. Where you're able to go into a store and buy somebody's record. Now it's either you're gonna go to the swamp, you're gonna go to the indoor, you're gonna go to the show and buy their stuff. So it got kind of narrowed down. People get it on Spotify. People get it on YouTube or whatever. So a lot of the dope artists a lot of the og artists now are dependent on shows and it stopped a lot of that because of this pandemic so yeah it stopped it's, that's where this where the money's at but me personally i was never interested in the money i just had passion for music so. right you did it for the love of it yeah i did yeah. it for the love right but if and, i could my bad for no it. no go for it but if i could uh make money and provide for my fam shit even better yeah, yeah. And, and it's a good thing that you do it for the love of it because when I first started to DJ, that's what I started as, just a, yeah. as a DJ. I never did it to get popular. I did it because I loved it. I love I love DJing. I love cutting. I love uh, uh, making people dance. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I, I love the skill and everything. I never thought I would ever get popular. I never thought years later I would be here, okay? But I never did it for the money. And one thing that I always preach to everyone is if you release something good, uh, money will come knocking. Money will come looking for Eventually you. it will. Yeah. If you got if you if you got good taste in music, money will come knocking, but I was never like like thinking about like, oh if I do this song, if I make a hit. Cause there's a lot of artists that I bet you there's a lot of artists that be thinking like if I make this hit, oh shit, I could blow up. Now when I make a hit, I'm thinking about like, oh shit, they're gonna like this. They they they, they could dance to this. They could Mm -hmm. the, you know, like I'm thinking about the vibes. I'm not thinking about the money. Right, right, and that's good. That's good. That's a good thing, and that, that way it keeps your head clear from uh, thinking that you're gonna get rich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, again, if you release good things, uh, money will come looking for you, and that's just the way oh, it yeah. always works. Okay, oh, that, yeah. at least that's the way it happened to for me. Okay. Uh, now, other than that, so you started writing around the age of eleven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you remember when you first started recording? Now, I'm not talking about a studio. I'm talking about maybe just at home. Did you ever record something where you heard yourself? When I was when I was 15, um, I actually uh, dreamt about fucking going in the studio with the mic and shit. That was my dream and shit. Because I used to record with the speaker and my phone. Like right. I used to put them side by side with my speaker and my phone. And I would, say, and I would think to myself, like, fuck, my dream is to record in the studio with the mic. And like that was the best feeling ever, bro. When I first got in, like, shit, this shit like motivates my boy. Like when I see a mic, 
I trip out my boy like that. Okay. Like I like I that shit was a trip for. Okay. Now you record yourself, uh, you record a verse or uh, and then they stop it, they play back. When they play back, what was your opinion about yourself? I thought I was the motherfucking best, dog. I, <laughs> I heard myself, I was like, I'm a uh this shit hard. They gonna feel this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, most rappers that I know, and this happens if, if, if I interviewed maybe, you know, 70 people, I would say about 50 people would say they didn't like hearing themselves. They just said at first it, it felt odd hearing themselves. But yeah. it, the more they did it, eventually they got better and better and better yeah. and they got used to it or whatnot. So uh, um, do you remember the very first song you recorded? I do. Um, like I said, I was fucking recording with the speaker and, and the phone. Now, now, what do you mean by speaker and the phone? Kind of like, explain that. So I put the... the I put the speaker, you know, and I had like two phones. So I put the beat on the speaker and then I recorded with the other phone and shit. And that shit was dope. I was like, I was thinking like, oh, hey, this shit dope. This shit rec fucking studio quality. Like what it do? I put it on my SoundCloud. That shit started getting hits and shit. And I was like, no shit. I, I could, I could do something, you know, I could, I could put the hood on and shit. I could put like, I could. Okay. Yeah. You know, let me give you an idea. Okay. Uh, next time you do a video. And it matches what you just did. Put put that, uh, have that filmed, and put that on hey, the video. Hey, that's just dope. That's just a good idea, actually. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do it. That way, people can kind of see your struggle, what you went through to get to where you're at right now, and where you're going to be getting. Because yeah. everybody has a beginning, so it's important for people to see that. I've I've known people that have told me they recorded on a PSP, and people told me they recorded on a karaoke, and I said, put that out, man. You yeah. know, put that out. Talk about it. You know. Hell yeah. Because uh, um. I mean, I was never a rapper, but the, the the best that I can do was record my voice on a fucking on an answering service at home. You know, you know, just reach the Alvarez family. Make sure to leave a <laughs> message, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And then when I was here, I was like, I'm gonna fucking sound goofy. Here, you leave the message. I will tell my brother, you know. But anyways, check this out. We're gonna go ahead and press pause right there. We're gonna go ahead and take a ten minute yeah. break, okay? And uh, we're gonna come right back for sure with your yeah. kid. Hey, much love to Wizard, um, Tony the Wizard. Much love, bro. Thank all you good, me all good. It. All right, everybody. Uh, why don't you go get yourself a Modelo? He's probably going to get some more. Okay. <laughs> you um, up. You yeah, okay. Know. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes. So make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that Trouble Kid is in the motherfucking building. Hope he doesn't get into trouble. So <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah. Welcome to Rodeo Radio, and I am your host, Tony A. the Wizard. We started a GoFundMe page because we need you to help us meet our goal. And our goal is to release a chicano rap documentary and we need you to be a part of this everyone who contributes will have certain incentives offered to them for an example i'll name one your name will be on the credits of the film everyone who gives everyone who contributes uh their name will be on the credits that's just one thing that we have to offer it but yet if you read the description you see other incentives for your contribution if you've seen the rodeo mixtape documentary you will not be disappointed with this documentary shining light on Chicano rap, the Chicano culture. It is something that can be used as an educational tool uh, now and in the future. So once again, help us meet our goal so that we can start production. And remember this, we have a voice and we will be heard. What it do, what it do, it's Mr. Little One chilling on Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A and John motherfucking Elkin, boy. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Shadow. You're watching Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, Tony A, the wizard. You know what time it is. Yeah, what up? This is Mr. Night Owl, and you're listening to Rhodium Radio with the legendary Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Yo, what's cracking? Nosotros somos Aqua. Y estamos aquí con Tony A, the Wizard. You know Rodium what it is. Radio, damn it. You yeah. know what it is. Yo, what up? This is Mellow Man, Ace and Padrino. And you tuned in to Rodium Radio with my man, Tony A. Keep it locked. Yo, what's cracking? It's your boy, OG Arabian Prince from the world's most dangerous group, NWA. Sitting here with my boy, Tony A, the Wizard, on Rodium Radio. 
What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Magic Girl, and you're now listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, what's up? This is Bozo, a.k.a. Emiliano. You tune into Rhodium Radio on Tony Vision's YouTube channel. Let's get it. What up, what up? It's Mr. Soto. You guys are now in tune to Rhodium Radio right here on Tony Vision on YouTube. Yep. Check it out. This is MC Poncho on the MIC. Shout out to Tony A. the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. You already know. What up? This is DJ Trick, Spanish Fly, and you're watching Tony A. on the Rhodium Radio Show. Big G, Rhodium Radio, Tony A in full effect. Stay tuned, watch, listen. This is how we doing it over here. Yo, what up? I'm out here. This is Big Daddy Swoles. I'm jamming with my man, Tony A, the Wizard, out here on Rhodium Radio. The podcast is off the hook. Check us out. This is DJ Clientel, and you are listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Yeah, 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 this baby bounce here with Tony A, the Wizard. You are now tuned in to the Rhodium Radio. We do it for the people, you hear me? Mic check, mic check. Ernie G from Proper Thoughts. And I'm listening to Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. And if you don't know, you should know. What's up, everybody? This is Soren Baker. I'm the author of the book, The History of Gangster Rap, in stores now worldwide. And you're listening to Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. Make sure to check it out. We talk about the Rhodium mixtapes. We're here, Soren Baker, Rhodium Radio. Y'all, this is Reedy Gregg, and I'm chilling with Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Hey, this is Swifty Blue. I'm right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Wizard. Stay tuned. It's the KAS here live on Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A the Wizard. What up, y'all? This is Kiki Smooth, the first Mexican rapper out of Compton, rich and ruthless, and you're listening to the Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Grand Wizard El Mago himself. Hey, cop is in the house. What's up? It's quite the yes guy with my heart, but I got homeboy Tony A the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Yes, guy. Hey, what's up, Ante? It's your homeboy Duende. You're tuned into Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A the Wizard. Ya te la sabes, wey. What up, what up? It's your boy Baldacci the Beast, Afro Music, Face of LA. I right hear Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all tune in. Your boy Tony A the Wizard. Brah. This is Kelvin Anderson, owner of the world famous VIP Records. And you listen to my man Tony A, the Wizard, on Rhodium Radio. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's Lil Black, you the Brown Super Bowl, and you checking out Rhodium Radio with the homeboy Tony A, the Wizard. You was cracking at your boy OG Big Wicked, Real Ones Apparel, Orange County. I hear with my boy Tony A, the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Go make sure to peep it. Peace. Que tranza raza, aquí su servidor, sinful and pecador. And you're listening to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the Wizard. Check, check, what's up? It's your boy, Capital I, man, from the Mexican crew. And you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the Wizard. This motherfucker's a legend. Bah! What's up, y'all? This is Chris the Club, and you're watching the Rhodium Radio Show on Tony Vision on YouTube. What's up? This is Mr. D on Rhodium Radio, kicking back with the whole boy. Tony A. Yo, this is Sassy the Boss. Tune in on YouTube on Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Wizard. What's up? This is Leah Farsayer, a.k.a. the Dragon, the Serpent, the Spear. I'm on Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony the Wizard. Hey, man. Nick V and Eric V, the Baker Boys in the house, hanging out with Rhodium Radio and the one and only Tony the Wizard. Tony the Wizard, a.k.a. Kylo Ren, Ooh. right here on YouTube. Sundays and Wednesdays. Tony Vision, subscribe Tony now. Tony Vision, yeah, Big yeah, yeah. Big baby. What's good with it? This is Old Creep, a.k.a. Jay Stompanato. I'm putting it down for Orange County on the Rhodium Radio Show by West Coast legend DJ Tony A. We up and out this bitch. What's up with it, dog? This is West Coast Gilly on Rhodium Radio with the legend Tony A. The Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is. West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Orrier listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy Doughboy Tony. You're tuned into Rhodium Radio with West Coast legend Tony A. The Wizard. What up? It's your boy Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana, CA, and we're right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio, Tony Vision on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187 above the law in the building. And you're tuned into Rhodium Radio. Well, my man told me, yay, the wizard. Blah! What's up? This is Darren Vegas here on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Real West Coast hip-hop history right here. 
Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house here at the Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A. the Wizard giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo B. And you're listening to Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. That's what's up right there. Hey, yo, what's up, man? This is of the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A. the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Yo, shout out to Rhodium Radio, Tony A. the Wizard, your boy Pablo Nunez right here in the studio. Be about it, people. Que onda muchacho, ahí viene este miro. Kim with the Black Sican and Negrito de los Angelitos. And you're checking out that Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Que hubo raza, this is Wicked from the Brown Side here on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. You know. What up, it's your homeboy Infinite TGM, chilling with Tony Hay, the wizard, on Rodeo Radio. Make sure you guys go check that out. What up, everybody? This is Wicked Baby Doll, and I'm chilling with Tony A at Rodeo Radio. Check it out. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow him on Instagram. What's good? What's good? It's your boy Spanky Local, and you tuning in to Rodeo Radio with that motherfucking legend, Mr. Tony A. You know what time it is, West. Hey, what up? This is Rebello the Dome, and this is Dominator. And we came straight from the 805 ready to slap that motherfucking meat on your grill, bitch. Rhodium Radio, <laughs> Central Coast Click. What up? What up with it? This your boy OG Magoo, Los Angeles Airbus artist. Big chilling on site with the homie Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. All gas, no break. Let's get it. Man, you're now listening to LA Icon, man. Right here live with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. Blah! What's up, what's up? This is Essa Daz, the Spanish Fly, with that reintroduction right here on Rhodium Radio with my boy, the wizard, Tony A. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's the Spanish Fly MC. Big MOC, Mr. Most MC. On the Rhodium Radio show, baby, with Tony A, the Grand Wizard. Let's go. Johnny D from Spanish Fly on Rhodium Radio. Your one and only Theo with the giant Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Trish Toledo, and I'm over here with Tony A., John motherfucking Elkins, and DG Media at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Blanca. Bobby D. presents Uncle Snoop's Army. Chilling right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A., the wizard. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on YouTube. What up, West Coast and all hip-hop fans? This is your girl, Violet Brown, and I'm here with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, this is Daniel Jones, the D to the motherfucking G Media Clips. Here with your boy, Tony A. the Wizard on the Rhodium Radio Show. Check, check, one, two, one, two. This is Roger Live, and you are in tune to the sounds of Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio West Coast. Yo, what's up? This is John motherfucking Elkins, and you're tuning into Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, DJ Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rhodium Radio is live up in this biatch. Stupid dope shit by WA. You wanna spray? Dumb motherfuckers, no doubt. And suck a DJ. Get the fuck out. Tony? What did you say on the What did you say on Tony? Ha <laughs> ha 
Sorry, everybody, that we took a longer break. I had to talk, take a long-ass eight-ball piss. You know how that goes. But uh, other than that, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump butt naked right back into it with Trouble Kid. How you Those, doing? What it do? And you didn't get into trouble during the break, did you? Nah. No. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? I wanted to ask you, uh, for the fans that may be wondering, how did you end up getting that name Trouble Kid? And if you could speak a little bit into the mic, please. Because since a young and I've been getting into trouble and shit, and like... I believe like, cause there's a uh, there's a lot of a lot of teens like myself. I'm a teen, uh -huh. and I believe like we we got so much potential. Us Chicanos, we yeah. got so much potential, but we're influenced by the wrong people and shit. Uh -huh. Like shit, I, I'm a gang member and straight straight up like I'm doing some shit for the for the hood for the set. Right, and I'm keep on doing it. I'm gonna keep on the. I'm I'm gonna do something good for the raza. Right, you're gonna do it uh, through your music. Yeah. Okay, good. And that's a good way to speak uh, through your music. You know, that's how your voice can be heard and people can uh, uh, relate to you from everywhere. A lot of people can relate to you because a lot of people have done that, you know, and uh, a lot of good has come out of it when you speak your mind, you speak what's in your heart through oh, your yeah. music, you know. Uh, but now, other than that, before Trouble Kid, did you ever have another name? Yeah, I had um, fucking uh, Lowe's. Um, I had Lowe's. Cause okay. uh, Carlos. Okay. So I had L O S. There's just the three uh, last letters in my name. Okay. Yeah. Carlos. Okay. Y los. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> los. Like that's the kind of like the or something like that. Los Tigres del Norte. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, Los Tigres del Norte. Bum, my boy. Yeah. They go hard. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So you watch a lot of Spanish movies? Hell yeah. Yeah. Are you a novela guy? Or not really? When I was young, I, my my <laughs> mama would always put the novelas. You know. Coming right. from a Mexican family. Right. I would watch fucking uh, La Virgen de Guadalupe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That'll yeah, that's work, a man. dope ass show. Okay. Uh, just to speak a little bit closer to the mic, my boy. So other than that, now, um, what can people expect from you today? I know, uh, uh, well, let us backtrack a little bit because you started recording and you started hearing yourself uh, play back. You liked what you had, what you have heard. What was the first single that you could remember you put out? Genocide. Okay, Genocide. Now, what was Genocide about and wh why why that song as your first single? About humanity, like, get, like look at everything that's happening right now, my boy, in the yeah. world. Yeah. People, our own people are killing our own people. Yeah. So, we got we to gotta make something like, uh, we got to make a difference. So, someone got to make a difference, you know? Yeah, yeah. Somebody got to make a difference. So I had to make, I don't know, look it up, genocide, look what it is. Look okay. the definition of it. Okay, now when you released that single, what was the response that you got? Dope. It was good? Everybody, yeah, everybody was fucking with it. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. And is that still available today on yeah. uh, YouTube and everything? Or um, I actually dropped it on SoundCloud and shit. Okay, okay. And now, uh, what came after that? Um, let me think. Estos para la raza. I made another song. Actually, I, I have a song dropping Estos para la raza, but I have another song like 
I named a lot of songs just for La Raza. I'm a big, ra- I like, the movement I'm making right now is for the Raza. Okay. Yeah, so I, like, I have a uh, fucking, a lot of songs fucking named Raza and shit. No shit. Yeah. Well, that's good, you know. Uh, um, that's actually a first uh, for somebody to come up with different songs and name it almost the same thing. Yeah, because that's the <laughs> movement I'm pushing. That's good, man. That's a good thing. Yeah. And w- w- what do you think it is that, uh, if you will, that, that gives you that desire to push for the raza, like what you're saying. What, what, what do you think it is? Is this, is this something you saw as a kid? Is it something you saw in your family? Or is it just something that's within yourself? It's something that's within myself. Okay. Because, shit, I've seen a lot of, uh, I've seen my uncle fucking, like, just become a drug addict and shit. I've seen, mm-hmm. seen my mama, you know, like, it's just crazy, my boys. It's time like we make a difference in this, and in, in the in the Mex- Mexican environment and shit. Mm-hmm. Like the environment and the environment that I come from, fool. There's not a lot of people that really try to push for the people. There's just a lot of people trying to push drugs. Yeah. So like, shit. It's time someone makes a difference and shit. I, I, and I think that's a very good message, and I think a lot of people that are listening would agree with you on that. And it, hey. I think it's very very true. I survived, and I'm sure a lot of the people, and I'm speaking for a lot of people the uh, crack epidemic during the 80s. Yeah. So we always say that if we survive that, the 80s era of crack and gang violence, we could survive COVID, you know? Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, me coming from the ghetto, us people in the ghetto, we personally don't give a fuck about COVID. I don't even believe in COVID, but hey, stay safe, wear a mask and shit. But like there's, like we we think about there's worse things happening in the in the in the in our streets than COVID. Right. Okay. You know what we should start doing? Like everybody who rasa start wearing luchador masks. <laughs> if they want us to wear masks, might as well just you know I'm I'll be Santo, you be Blue Demon. Yeah. We have mean mascaras running around the streets. You know we could we should we should should do that. Girls, too. Can you imagine dope ass looking girls wearing you know. Blue Demon Mascaras, Horacan Ramirez, and <laughs> all those people. So, so, yeah, that'll be dope. That'll be dope. That would be dope as well. I, I think, as a matter of fact, Bella wore a mask in one of her videos. Uh, oh, it was, she a, did. It was uh, kind a of like a, mask, a yeah, it was ski, ski mask. mask. That was dope. Yeah, that was, that dope. was dope. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, you did a song with Bella as well, right? Yeah. Okay, you gotta think about that one? Or? <laughs> no, we actually uh, killed it in uh, our first, that was our first studio session. For reals? Yeah, we okay. killed it. The first... The now, now, you heard her spit. What was your thoughts? And don't lie. She's fucking hard. Okay. There's not a lot of female doing it up. And she's all about the women empowerment and shit. Yeah. So there's... She's supporting the females. That's so a good whoop, thing. Hey, shout out. Hey, Bella doing it up. Yeah. So now, what was that song about so that people can look it up? ¿Cómo se llama la canción? Holla at me. Okay. And uh, um, who connected you guys to, to work together in the studio? My manager, Erica. Yeah. Erica. Yeah. Who, who produced the track? Do you remember? Hey, shout out Darren Vegas. Darren Vegas. Yeah. Okay. And that track is available where for people to listen to or the people it's, to watch? It's unreleased. Oh, it's unreleased. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well, when is that dropping again? I heard somebody whisper it over there. When is it dropping? October 19th. October, October 19th. With October 19th with the video. Yeah. Yeah, right in time for Halloween. Yeah, so, that'll work, man. That'll yeah. work. So now, uh, when can we? Exp- oh, you got a song you said coming out soon, or Esto para la raza. Okay, yeah. another song, Esto para la raza. Yeah. Okay, so it's for the raza then. Hell so yeah. yeah. So when is that dropping, or is it already dropped? Nah, it's dropping September 16, uh, Mexican Independence Day. So, so uh, can we expect the video for that as well? Hell yeah. Okay. That's what. Um, we're not dropping it just like a song. We're dropping it with the with the visuals. Yeah, visuals are important. Oh, yeah. Very, very important. Um, now, let me ask you this. Do you consider yourself, because this question is usually 50-50 among the raza, okay? Yeah. Do you consider yourself a Chicano rapper? I do it for my raza, but I'm versatile. I could, I could, I could like, you know what? Yeah, I do consider myself a Chicano rapper. Okay. Okay, there's yeah. some that say no, even though they are Chicanos. Some that say they are, and I guess the reason why they say no is because they don't want to be put in a box. They just want to be known as an artist. Yeah, I respect both. Yeah, I respect both. You know, uh, not everybody. For an example, if you take a black artist and he just raps, 
not just because he's black, we're going to say he's gangster rapper. Yeah. You know, you, you just can't do that. Just because you're Rasa, we just can say, oh, that's Chicano rap. You know, why can't you just be an artist? You know, but now if you want to categorize yourself and make your music for the Rasa, okay, we could, we understand that. You know, I, I think we everybody should have a choice on uh, where they want to be categorized, you know, as far as uh, their music is concerned. So, OK, so you got the song September 16th, you said yeah, Mexican right. Independence yeah, Day. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm laughing because I want you to look behind you real fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Don't say nothing. We'll bring them out later. But uh, other than that, um, w what does Trouble Kid want to accomplish with his rap career? What is one thing that after you, it's all said and done, say hypothetically that you set a goal, I'm going to stop rapping when I'm 35 or 40 or whatever, whatever age. What is one thing that you want people to say that guy was known for? Putting the rest like on top, on top. Okay, that's yeah. good. That's good. And and uh, I hope that through your music and and through your life that you would continue to be a positive role model for the younger generation to look I do up this to. Shit for the youth. Okay. Straight up. Yeah. Okay, that's good, man. And uh, you being a teenager yourself, most people like my son, yeah. my, myself would consider yourself still a youth, and that's okay. Yeah, I am. You know? yeah. Okay, and that's okay. But always remember that there's somebody coming up behind you that you need to be a positive, you know, uh, uh, influence for. Oh, yeah. For, you know, because we need good um, role models. We, we need, know? yeah, I'm trying to influence our people, you know, do better, you know, we, we could provide, let's provide. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we've done here on Rodent Radio is provide a platform for Raza, for artists, for new artists, for OG artists, for, you know, uh, um, if you will, people that are just barely starting to come up here and get exposure that they possibly normally wouldn't get at a Power 106 or at a, at a, um, at a KD because they're only interested on the big shots, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And even if you were a big shot and you had a hit song, you're probably only going to get about 10 minutes over there. Uh, and they'll probably ask you about three questions. What are you doing? How you know? What are you doing? Uh, when can we expect this? And when can the next time people can see you? That's pretty much it. On here, you get a full hour, or some people get two hours to express and to share and to let people know what kind of person you are, what kind of music you're doing, and uh, you can gain fans or you can lose fans here. You yeah. know, it's all up to the individual on how they want to present themselves when they come on the show. And I think it's very important that what you're saying is you're doing this for your people. It's very, very important. I hope that people respect that and that people continue to follow you and uh, uh, support you, you know, in what you're doing, you know, because okay. I hope everything turns out positive for you. Um, yeah, hopefully, you know. Now. Como dice mi jefa, primero Dios, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's a good, that, that's a good thing to follow. Yeah. Now, you uh, have a single coming out. Can people expect the EP after that, or album, or are you going to continue to drop single, single, single? Um, I think I'm going to continue to drop single, single, single. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll work, man. Well, I'll tell you what. Whatever I can do to help you out, whatever I can do to, um, if you will, shine light on what you're doing, you let me know through your manager. Your manager will contact me, and How you know, you? and uh, we'll work something out, man, where we can help push you. Hey, yeah, okay? much love. Much love. All hey, good. Much love to Tony the Wizard. All good, brother. Well, listen, at this time, I want to give you an opportunity to give you a shout outs. Anything you want to say, go ahead at your floor. Say whatever you want. And, uh, um, you know, we'll say uh, peace out. Much love. And you know what? Much success to you. So give hey. your shout outs, brother. Hey, I'm thankful for the people who are rocking with me right now. Everybody show me support. I'm rocking with y'all too. Straight up. I'm going to support, support it because there's a lot of people for, like showing yeah. me love. You know, I'm just a ghetto kid from a ghetto neighborhood. And for me to like come over here and like them people showing me love, that's dope. That's dope. That'll work. That'll work, brother. Okay. Other than that, um, I hope you hang around. We'll, we'll take some pictures. We'll get, uh, oh, yeah. get a drop, brother. And um, much love, much success to you, okay? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Once again, we're going to take a 10-minute break. We'll be right back with... Young Quicks, okay? You ain't gonna Ooh. wanna go nowhere. He just provided us some dope-ass mariscos huh. and I'm about to go kill another plate. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be yeah. back. Go get yourself a Modelo, slap your girl on the ass, and make sure you guys <laughs> come back in 10 minutes. See Ooh. you.
Yo, what's up? It's Bella. I'm here on Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. Stay tuned. Yo, it's Ray Monique on Rodium Radio with Tony A. The motherfucking wizard. Tune in and subscribe. What's going down, everybody? This is Big Rich G here at Rodium Radio with Tony A. You guys got to check this out, man. Don't miss out. Tune in. It's your boy, Producer A. here at Rodium Radio. It's your boy, Tony A. Make sure y'all subscribe every Sunday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. with the dopest podcast popping in the motherfucking West Coast. Make sure y'all subscribe. Peace. Yeah, this is Pablito here at Rodium Radio. I'm here with Tony A. the Wizard. Tune in. What's cracking? It's your boy Noel G in the house, a.k.a. Hector. You guys know what time it is right here with the Rhodium Radio Show, hosted by your boy, Tony A. the Wizard. Ha <laughs> ha! Keep listening. We got something good for you. What's good, beautiful ladies? It's your boy, MC Magic. Tony A. the Wizard. You already know. Rhodium Radio Show. Turn it up. Yo, what's up? Good with y'all. This your boy, Big Prodigy, from the legendary South Central Cartel. And I'm over here chilling with my homeboy, Tony A. the Wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the page on YouTube. And by the way, check out that interview with yours truly. You dig? Wes. What's up, guys? This is my YouTube. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Little Silent from BOTG, the voice of the ghetto man. Tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeon Radio. You already know, hosted by the legend himself, Tony A. the Wizard, man. Just don't miss out, man. That should be active out here. What's up, everyone? This is Antonio Palayo. I'm here at Rodeon Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to subscribe. Yo, what's up, everybody? L.A. Baseball Head here, also known as L.A.F.C. Soccer Head, chilling on Rodeon Radio with my homeboy, Tony A., the Wizard. What it do? DJ Joe Cooley. You chilling with me, DJ Tony A., the Wizard, and Rodeon Radio. You heard me? What up, everyone? This is Solita. Tune into Rodeon Radio, hosted by Tony A., the Wizard. What up, what up? Susie Q in the motherfucking building. I'm here chilling with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Rhodium Radio, YouTube. You guys check it out. Subscribe. Thank it easy. Yo, this is Shady Boy right here with Tony A, the wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's poppin' with it, family? It's your boy, Jokes Loves Life. And you are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. That's right. Love life, y'all. This your boy, Wito Trees, Rhodium Radio in the house, Tony A, the wizard, what's up? What's up, this is your boy, Panther, on Rhodium Radio, tune in with your boy, Tony A, the wizard, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, yeah, yeah. This is Murray Brumfield, a.k.a. Mexicali Slim, Familia Records, and you rolling with Rhodium Radio with Tony A. Yo, what up, it's your boy, DJ Kazel, we're right here live, Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the wizard, that's what's up, Ooh. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Mariah Avila. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with Tony the Wizard. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Yo, it's cracking. It's your homeboy, Mr. Motherfucking Junebug. And you just tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You know. Juvalet Rasa, it's your homeboy, Hypnotic, right here in Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you subscribe, like, and do all that. Don't forget to comment. Much love. Yo, 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 this is Grincho Brown on Rodeo Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Keeping this shit popping, all West Coast, all love. Shout out to my raza, we getting it. Hey, look, this is Chunks, the San Diego All Star. You are now tuned in to Rodeo Radio right here with Tony A, the wizard. Tap in. Oh, man, we right here live on the. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch.
cold tissue. Hey, yo, D, you got a level? D, hit record, man. And we heard about this young kid from the hardware area named Tony A. And he was a DJ, you know what I'm saying? He was going in with, with the big with the big stars, you know what I'm saying? And he was like one of us going in and infiltrating inside of all these MCs, you know what I'm saying? A rodeo mixtape is just mixed of different types of music, no matter what genre it is. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's like, a, like making your own musical movie. When La Raza came out, man, I just, even the amount of sales of the single of La Raza that got moved out of the rhodium was, it was crazy, bro. And that song just got played and it was played in all the stands over there. And I was blessed to go back one time, even to see it. And I want to say in 91 or 92. Although they were not black, they were, or, you know, Asian, whatever you want to call them. They, they were cool and they embraced everybody, blacks, Latinos, whoever came to the came to the swap meet to want to buy music they were record people welcome back everybody to rodeo radio episode 90 with the podcast of slaps your culture fat ass with a fat ass dick we're back now to go to shower hour with tony a the wizard and i am your host and we're gonna go ahead and jump butt naked right back into it with young quicks oh shit what the hell what's good og oh man you started a new trend brother no i just i was you know i came prepared for the covid that's oh it. i like that i like that man you know uh you you should actually start making those and start handing them out or start selling them i but guarantee you rasa American, will start half american flag. yes rasa will start supporting them so uh anyways how you doing man i'm good man it's a pleasure to be here thank yeah. you for having me oh well it's a pleasure having to have you and as a matter of fact you brought some food now, for the people that made well, I know... I didn't bring it personally, but yeah, I, I had something to do with it. Yes, but you brought us a gift, so thank you. We all ate. Appreciate it. Can I give a shout-out to them real yes, quick? Yes, absolutely. Shout-out to Marisco Aguirre from East LA for taking care of all of us and feeding us, man. I appreciate you. Much love. Yeah, yeah. actually, some of it looked like some uh, Southern food, huh? Yeah, the I'm corn, not sure what was it called. What was it called real quick? Shrimp boil. Shrimp boil. Okay, shrimp boil. And the uh, aguachiles. Aguachiles. Okay. Aguachiles. And then the other one, I just say southern food. It was just like some shrimp. He said if you like, uh, what is what is the restaurant did you say? Boiling crab. Um, boiling crab okay. Then this is ten times better. So. Okay. I, uh, dope, dope, man. I so, liked it. I, I know you. I know you had a little drive all the way from Oxnard, Oxnard, yep. Oxnard in the house, Oxnard yes. stand up. Eight oh five, eight oh five. What up? Now, uh, what? How was your drive coming over here? Because I know this COVID thing kind of slowed down traffic a little bit, but things have opened up. It was up. long. It was long. Yeah. It was long. But besides that, it was cool. I mean, I just wanted to make, like I told you, I don't like being late. So I wanted to be here on time. I told you I would be here at a certain time. I was here at that time. So that's all I was worried about, just you know getting here and safely and everything. Well, you know, I appreciate that, man, because I like, I'm very punctual. If I say I'm going to be there at 7 o'clock, I'll be there about 6.45 or yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah. So, and you showed up with the mask and with food. Food. So you scored a lot of points. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, man. Thank you, man. All good, man. So let me ask you this. Uh, uh, how was your weekend? Um, it was good. I mean, see my family. We went, we'll went. go out to eat and stuff. You know, just regular stuff. I, I try to, besides the music, because I treat my music as my regular job, I try to just, you know, live a normal life. And I don't have no kids or I'm not married, so I just, you know, hang out with my family, my niece, my nephew, and... Okay. Everybody else. So it's the same. You're single and ready to mingle. Uh, I wouldn't say all that, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm single. Okay, okay. Well, let me take that back because I don't know who made me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, I'll take that back. Please. Block uh, them off from YouTube right now. No, yeah. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But, but that, that's how I used to do it back in the day when I had rec turntables. Uh, so now, any good movies that you've seen lately that you could recommend? Are you a movie guy? Bro, I honestly don't even own a TV. I don't know if that's even. For real? I think I don't own the TV. Oh, you know we're in 2020, right? 
I guess I just, you know I don't own a TV. I try not to get caught up in all that stuff. Like I'll go to my mom's or you know if my brother's watching TV because I live with my brother. I'll, I'll watch a little bit, but I'm not really like I just try to you know just focus and I have a computer and I just you know go on there and if I really need to watch something. But one of my favorite movies is Fruitvale Station. That's is, is which one? Fruitvale Station. I haven't seen that one. It's about the guy that gets beat up at the train station. And oh yeah 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 yeah. A, that was up north. Huh? Yeah yeah. That's one of my favorite movies. Okay okay. I like movies that you that are based on true stories. I don't really like the nonfiction or all that fiction. Uh huh. I'm not okay. like a big Marvel fan or none of that. Okay okay. Now uh, um. I seen a good movie, and I said it a couple of days ago um, when I had my past guest here. It's a movie called The Old Guard. I think it's called The Old Guard. When you get a chance, it's on Netflix. Check it out. You're going to like it. The Old Guard. I hope if my brother's watching, let me borrow your TV, vato. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, just, just go over just take, a, just take a 12 pack, bro. Yeah, hey, hit. bro, let me watch. What is it? The Old Guard. The Old, old Guard. guard. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird name, but The Old Guard. Yeah. Uh, si now, let me ask you this. Uh, um, uh, soccer fan? Big soccer fan. Okay, what's your favorite team? America from the Mexican Soccer League. That's America? My, that's my team, yeah. My favorite okay. soccer player growing up was Cuauhtémoc Blanco. Don't tell me you're going for Chivas. No, no. Okay, no, well, we're no, good then. No, we're, we're not going to argue. But I, all my homies are Chivas fans. My dad's a Chivas fan. My for brother real? that I'm talking about, he's a Chivas fan. He's probably watching right now. He knows we've always okay, had that rivalry. Okay, what happened, bro? What happened? I, I just, you know, I've always gone against the grain. Someone tells me this wall's blue, I'll be like, nah, it's black. I'll so that tells you, know, just... so tell me you're a Clipper fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of basketball. Okay. But okay. I support anything local. I wear a Clippers jersey. I wear a Lakers jersey. I wear a Dodgers jersey. I wear an Angels jersey. I'm not I'm not really that, you know. Okay, what about uh, football? Americano? Tampoco. Nada? Tampoco. Now, I'm more of a boxing fan. Than, okay, you know? let's talk boxing a little okay. bit. Uh, 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 some of your favorite boxers or some of your favorite fights that you can remember? My favorite boxer is Julio Cesar Chavez. Of course. All time, you know. My favorite fight is probably going to be the one that I actually participated in. I walked out Brandon Reels when he fought, fought Michael Verrado the third time in Denver. In two, it was 2015. It was in Denver, and um, he actually won in the third round by knocking him out. And I got to walk him out with one of my songs, so that was that was pretty cool. No shit. Yeah. I thought cool. you were going to tell me that the fight that you were in outside of the liquor store. No, 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 no. Actually being a part of the experience coming out on HBO and actually yeah. winning, going to the wrong territory, getting booed on our way out. Okay. To Then when we're winning on our way out, being, you know, greeting with with cheers it's a, it's a whole that's, different feeling it's a whole different that's ballpark. awesome and, and not too many people experience that yeah bro the only person that i knew besides myself at that point was justin bieber and lil wayne i'll tell you another guy and he used to rap for one of your homies from oxnard remember fernando vargas yes i was for shout out fernando vargas yeah sinful from the mexicans okay sinful he used to come that's out dope. and used to bust that's dope yeah man that's so, dope that's yeah. dope so, yeah, very few people have done that. And and one thing, when the Mexicans were here, uh, Simple and Capital I, man, much love to the, those guys. We didn't get a chance to talk about that. Okay. But now, you Fernando Vargas fan, even though you guys are from the same hood. Bro, actually, speaking of Fernando Vargas, he gave me the opportunity to make the theme song for his reality TV show. Really? I think the first artist that got to do it was Snow White, the product. I was the second artist that got to do it. So wow. this is a season two. It's not out yet, but the theme song's done. I did it. He reached out. He told me, hey, I could have anybody do it, but you're from my hometown. Let's get it. And yeah. So people show me love, you know. I'm, I'm blessed, bro. I can't really complain. I'm in my 20s. I'm, I'm I'm telling you, I'm not married, no kids. I'm straight, you know. I'm. And you're not single and ready to mingle. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I'm not looking for it. That's what I should say. I'm not looking for it. I'm not thinking about it. If it happens, Like, it I'm happens. focused, bro. I'm, so I'm, some big nuggets happen to walk by. I don't, I'm not, as long as they're real, I'm not a fan of fake shit. Okay. Yeah, me neither. I don't like nothing fake, yeah. bro. What about fake boobies? No, never fucking, ex never had experience with any that what I could think fake of. Fake lips? I, I, if, they, if they had them, I didn't know. Fake eyebrows. Yeah. I, I, I'm Fake pretty, eyelashes? Like painting them on, right? You mean like painting them on? <laughs> I've even had the ones that tatted them, put them, you know, get them tatted, right? Fake arm, fake legs? Uh, no, 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 no. Can you imagine if a girl unscrewed off her arm? <laughs> I'll probably want her run out. <laughs> but it's about when now? Turn the lights off then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All good, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, you're gotcha, Tony. I, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I, okay, I saw one meme a long time ago because I, I you, you know, you like my memes, right? Yeah, yeah. You Bro, them. I, I can't even, because I'm telling you, they're so relatable that I know that I'm not the only one that laughs at them, bro. I know. You know, because we all know somebody that's going through that exact thing you're posting about. So you know, we, I just laugh. I just laugh. I know, but, you know, but I need to stop because you know what, the people that report my memes are dudes. How do you know? They, they tell me. Uh, they, I'm not going to put nobody on blast, but they'll sit there and they're like, hey, fool, how can you post this? I just went through this. Hey, fool, how can you, my girl cheated on me. How can you, 
Cálmate, güey. <laughs> it's just a meme. It's just a meme. Yeah, I don't know your ass. Uh, yeah. You know, so. But yeah, a lot of them dudes. We got to get you a meme page. Yeah, they'll probably delete that too. Tony memes. You, you, you know, you know why my followers have never been able to climb up because this is my fifth IG page. Last year, four IG pages got deleted. On purpose or? I, I, IG never tells you why. They just log you out. Well, and you can't log back. Speaking in. of that, you know how I told you on Monday I was going to share the flyer for this thing. Yes. The only reason why I didn't was because Instagram had me banned. I couldn't post a caption. I couldn't respond to. I couldn't even leave a comment on your post on nothing. I don't know why, bro. It had me banned for a whole week. So barely yesterday, I was able to gain access to it. And I was able to post it and do all that stuff. I couldn't respond to no for comments. I, I swear to God. I swear to God. What the hell did you do? That's what I'm trying to figure out. But now I'm back to normal. So whoever's on Instagram, if you're watching this, hit the email bio. Tell me what I did wrong. So I You weren't like uploading like nah, news or nothing, nah. right? Well, that's what I was thinking. Because I did upload a clip of a music video okay. that I was in. And it showed some nalgas. Like straight nalgas. That's probably what it so was. So that's what I was like. Maybe... A hyena or a vato yeah. at this point yeah. was like, hey, this is nudity. Let's report it. And I yeah. got banned for a few days. But I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And I'm better than ever. <laughs> hey, that's good. That's good, brother. That's good. So now, um, you ever play any sports growing up, brother? Yeah, I played uh, baseball and I played soccer. Were you any good? I don't like to speak of myself, so but I'll tell you stories that other people have said about me. Yeah, they, they, okay. they, I was actually, the reason why I stopped playing soccer was because I got robbed from from being a campeón goleador, which means you scored the most goals in the league. I got robbed in front of my face, in front of my family, in front of my own coach. And the coach tried to make it back, tried to m make me feel better by giving me my own trophy a few days later, be like, nah, you're the goleador. Right, right. So, you know, ever since then, I knew that it was all basically, you know, fake. And yeah, I just, fake. I, 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 and even in the pros. Yeah, I lost I lost hope. And, and you know, I found music, luckily. Yeah. Luckily, and, and I feel like I'm more in more control with the music. And in soccer, I couldn't do nothing, bro. I could my, you know, like at, at that time, I think it mattered if your parents were going and supporting you. You yeah. know, and I, I had my mom, but my dad wasn't really that supportive. Well, he worked, you know, like like every other father, like right. long list of hours, so he wasn't really there. But my mom tried, so I don't blame that. But that kid that got the trophy, that was my teammate, his dad was there all the time. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it. No, you know? it does because my son played football for about eight years, but it was like the guy who was always in the coach's ear. Yeah. His son always got the, the quarterback position, you yeah. know. So, but now uh, growing up in a Mexican home, Mexican home, what type of music were you raised with as a kid? Now you're a kid walking around barefoot and your mom's cooking sopa de fidel. What can I remember? What's playing? Yeah, Paquita del Barrio. Talk a little bit closer to the mic, bro. Paquita del Barrio. I remember uh -huh. Paquita del Barrio. I remember Jose Alfredo Jimenez and Vicente Fernandez. Yeah. And like Ramon Ayala and stuff like that. But as far as like hip hop, I don't really remember my family playing much hip hop until I started growing up and speaking English and right. everything. Because my first language was Spanish. My parents don't know English till right. to this day. Right. My dad's been here since 17 years old. He still don't know English. And so I got, you know, Spanish right. was my first language. The first rapper that I could remember, my mom even being able to sing along to or remember any lyrics was Eminem. Really? And that's my favorite artist. What was she like? Day. I'm Slim Shady. Just no, the Slim. clean out my closet. I said, I said, I'm sorry, mama. That was her song. That was her song. Really? I don't know if it was because it was saying mama or something, but that was her song. So that was, that was you know, that's my favorite artist. So That's dope. That's dope. Well, well, why would Eminem be your favorite artist? Is it because your mom used to bump nah, it or knew it? No, nah, because of everything he accomplished and everything he was against. Right. The fact that he was a white American rapper and we don't call it white hip hop. We don't call it white rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's an artist. He's an artist, bro. And he signed 50 Cent. He brought us 50 Cent. He, you know, like what I'm saying? Like, right. he was like, you don't think I wish Dr. Dre could call me and be like, hey, let me sign you. You're going to be the first Mexican I signed. I'll go crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it hasn't happened, you know? So, like, the fact that he was able to get the attention of a Dr. Dre mm -hmm. and come from a trailer park, have problems, addiction problems, have problems with his family, and still accomplish what he accomplished, I think it goes further to the further than music with me, at least with me, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I respect them. I respect That's them. That's dope, man. Did you like his movie? Yeah. Okay, let's take uh, uh, Eight Mile. Uh, is it Get Rich or Die Trying? The Fifty yeah. Cent movie. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we have Straight Outta Compton. Mm -hmm. Then we have Notorious. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Tupac movie. Yeah. Out of all those movies, which one is your favorite? If you have one. I didn't know I had a favorite, but if you had me, which yeah. one would I go watch right now? Probably Eight Mile. Eight Mile. Yeah. Uh, your second best. Probably the Get Rich or Die Trying. Okay. I'm going to give you my top three. 
at least for me. Okay. Number one, straight out of Compton. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed that movie. I would probably have to say it would be a toss up between Notorious and uh, uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. Okay. So those are my favorite ones. So I'm hoping better ones come out. Exactly. I expected so much when that Tupac Lifetime yeah, that one, channel uh, yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that movie was terrible. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we'll and the reason why I say that because there should have only be one and it needs to be like the, the official one. The, the official, official one. one. Yeah. You know, don't let's not make a prequel or a part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like we don't need a La Bamba part two. Exactly. Or, you know, you know another Selena movie or any of that, you know? I already know. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So now, um, uh, uh, you're pretty much your your whole childhood and your adulthood is from Oxnard? Is that where you're from? Oxnard, bro. I was born in Ventura at the Ventura Hospital, but I was born and raised in Oxnard. Okay. You know? Okay. And uh, you ever thought about moving down, man? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, but I feel like. When you move out for the wrong reasons, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to move out because I made it, you know? Because okay. I made it out. I don't want to move out because I got kicked out or because I'm scared of somebody or something like that, you know? Or I owe somebody money or something like that. Right. Like, I want to do it for the right reasons. See, with me, I grew up in this neighborhood uh, where my parents came from Mexico and moved to Compton. I lived there till I was about nine. Okay. Then I came over here. But I don't claim Compton because I wasn't raised there. Yeah. Yeah. I know guys that have lived there till they're nine and then they move out and still claim Compton. I don't, you're not from Compton, bro. Yeah, bro. You know, you might have lived there in nine short years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but with me, I spent 40 years here. Okay, so this is where I'm from. Yeah. And if I ever still, even in my old age, ever do make it, I'm still going to, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to knock down a house and well, build Well, that's what I'm saying, home. bro. That's what I meant. Like, even if, like, I want, because certain people do make it, but they move. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be able to make it in be there but not really in, i don't mean like be in the hood obviously you gotta be right. smarter than that i just want to show people like hey man this did right. it, and he's still here you know look mm -hmm. at he has a nice house he, you know what i'm saying i want to be accessible still you yeah know? that's good you know what's one thing to me the dangers and and i speak from experience i've known guys that have lived in the hood whether it was compton whether it was paramount or whether it was uh, uh inglewood okay and they made it i won't mention their names yeah, yeah, yeah. Right away, they'll go to Calabasas, they'll go to Woodland Hills, exactly. and, I, and I get it, they can exactly. afford it. Yeah. But you know what happens? They never come back with another hit because they lost their ear to the street. Or come back and put a young artist on, or any of that, you know? I, I mean, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know anybody that has wrote a hit a ghetto song or a hood song that lives in Beverly Hills. It's just not gonna happen. So a lot of people say, I've made it, you know? I like to know their interpretation of of making it making it yeah everybody has know. their own interpretation i think you know like when you're up there with like the drakes and the likes of the little waynes and the you're on the billboard top 100 and that's when you really made it right. until then we're just you know i i would be afraid to like make it because one day you may see me with a mohawk skin, skinny, <laughs> skinny jeans, jeans or louis vuitton purse yeah, and be like i'm glass. doing it you know yeah i'm doing it <laughs> yeah, Lip, my nah. own lip gloss coming nah, out nah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. so, try my new shadow that's what i'm saying yeah. like i want to be able to show the kids that there's a right way to do it bro because right. i feel like the New generations that come out, they're getting the wrong image, bro. Like right. all certain rules that I grew up, I'm telling you, I'm in my twenties, bro. And certain rules that I grew up with don't exist no more. Don't exist no more. And believe me, bro. Uh, believe me, I'm with you on that. Um, there are certain people, and me and some of my OG homies that I've been in this rap game for a long time see it now that they made it almost like snitching is in. Snitch Not only that, just even wearing girl clothes, <laughs> anything, bro. Like I'm telling you, bro. I was. I remember growing up, my dad, if you walked a certain way, I'm not saying like this is the right way to raise your children, but if you walked a certain way, your hips moved a certain way, my dad would beat it out of you, bro. Yeah. Because it, we're men. That's what he taught us, you know? But I, I, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, to each his own, but I was raised a certain way and I just, you know, right. I have values and I have respect for myself and my family and my, right. my peers and I just, I want to do it right. Right. You know? No, I get it. I get it. And you know what? Um, <laughs> there was even an old song called Walk Like a Man. Okay. <laughs> so I, I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty soon, I, uh, I guess you're going to see rappers wearing khaki G strings. You know? <laughs> Con tacones. Selling you know calendars. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like high you know? It, it, it almost seems sad to say, like, that's where it's going. Yeah. You know? But whatever. Uh, so, anyways, um, growing up, who were some of the first? Some of the first rap artists that you heard, and you mentioned Eminem. Give me some more that you heard growing up that you started listening to. Because you told me, told me listen to Spanish okay, music. Okay. Um, well, as far as rappers, right. you know, you know, when you come from a Mexican household, mm -hmm. when you're 
primos or tíos or anybody comes from Mexico, they usually stay with you, right? Of course. So I had a lot of primos staying with us. They were bumping Quinto Sol. Okay. Diablo. Yeah. Rappers like that, you know, back in the days. Right. You know, the. eventually I ended up, my first concert that I attended was a uh, uh, of the radio station back home, was, which which was Q1047 at that time, had a concert with a bunch of Chicano artists. Okay. Chingo Bling. That was my first concert that I ever went to. Chingo Bling, Mr. Capone, and B-Riders. Okay. I forgot who I was, bro. I forgot I was like 13 years old. I went. And that, so those are like my first experiences with seeing Latino artists do it. Okay. You know well, what? Well, well, now, your first experience, how did you like it? Did you enjoy it? I felt like I could do it. Okay. That's what I, I like, I... When I seen like the guys come out there and stuff like that, I felt like, oh, I could do that, you know? Like yeah. it didn't seem impossible. It's, okay. Every, every time I see somebody accomplish something, it just pumps me up, bro. I just I use it as motivation, whether you know, even that's, the bad, the good, the bad. I use it all as fuel, you know. That's that's, that's the good, best man. way to put you, it. You don't seem like the type of guy, and I say this because there's very few people I say this about that would hate on somebody else. I can't. Yeah. I can't, bro. Like, my dad always told me, don't be envidioso. Don't be a mentiroso. Don't be a mañoso. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he tells me, like, if you, if I told you today, like, you know how I told you, yeah, I'm going to bring some food. Yeah. If homeboy didn't come through, guess what? I would have had to tell Eric or something, hey, what we do this, go get some food. Right. I'm just the type of person I am, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I was raised. So that's why I say, like, maybe, that's why maybe I don't have kids. Cause I want to raise them the right way. I don't want to be selfish and say I'm gotta go on tour. I mean, obviously you can't do shows right now, but I gotta do stuff like this or something when I could be with my newborn baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to be selfish, so I, I'm trying to do it right. But you know, I'm not perfect either. So you know, oh, I'm no. learning as I go and I learn from everybody else. Nobody's perfect, and neither am I. I'm far from it, but we can learn from each other. And yeah. uh, I love your enthusiasm. I love that you don't complain, that you don't hate, because you know. My thing is this, that I was very fortunate to have met the people that I've met and I'm fortunate to have worked with the people that I work with. And not too many people can say they've met the people that I've met. But you know what? It's OK. That's my story. Yeah, that's your story. You, you make your own story, you know, uh, and you're making your own story. Now, one day, like what you said, you saw Chicanos up there. You were motivated. I can do this. I guarantee you there are people that are watching you. I want to be right there where he's at. I, Can, and let me just say something about that again. Half of those artists that I mentioned, I've either met, worked with, have my phone number. All those artists that I mentioned, bro. Awesome. So, like, I'm saying, like, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I'm not there yet, but it's possible. You yeah. could, you know, work with yeah. whoever you listen to, you know? And, and where, you, where you're getting at, you didn't get there by saying you're better than somebody else or hating on somebody else. Uh, you know, uh, um... Let me say this, that one thing that I've learned, and I learned this early in my 20s with this one man, and it took me a long time to understand it. It really did. Because when I was early in my 20s, believe it or not, I had a lot of, I had a lot of anger inside of me. I was probably mad at the world. And if you told me, let's narrow it down, Tony, what are you mad about? I didn't know. Okay? I didn't know. Uh, I was making money. I was traveling. Yeah. I had a nice car. I had yeah. my own place. Yeah, yeah. But it was just something inside of me that just was not happy. Now... He told me like this, you only go as far as your attitude. Now think about that for a second. If you have a bad attitude for everything, who's going to want you around? No one. I, I don't even care if you're the most talented rapper out yeah. there. Yeah. But if you have a bad attitude, nobody's going to want you around. Bro, I was going to say, like, people don't even think you that pay attention, but I've heard stories about people just the way they shake a hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it's just everything matters, the way you carry yourself, yes. the, the way yes. you talk to people, the way you treat people, everything counts, you know? You know, uh, um, much love, much respect to the Baker boys. And they shared this with me off camera, yeah. that there were people that they were asked, do you want to interview so-and-so? And they would say no, no. because of the, the, those people's attitudes. attitudes. And it's true. You, you can't. It's almost like you can't show love to somebody who has just has a terrible attitude all the time. It's almost like, how do I know this guy's not going to have that be that way towards me yeah. when we're live? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going to jeopardize Rodian Radio for one guy that wants to come over here and I believe may try to act hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, we need to res have a mutual respect and we need to, uh, 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 if anything, encourage each other. Yeah. You know, learn from, learn each, from other each other and motivate each other so that we can get to where we want to get to. You know, so that's where I'm at. So now, 
at what age would you say that you started to take things serious and say, you know what, I'm going to start writing. Uh, I'm going to start writing lyrics. Oh, man. That's probably... I, I have two different answers because writing lyrics, officially, I was 13 years old, bro. Okay. My mom sent me to a camp. My mom sent me to a, a camp fresh out of eighth grade. I wasn't even in high school yet. But I think my mom sent me more because I've always been small height-wise. Uh -huh. So I think she was scared for me. Like, this dude's going to go to a high school. There's big kids. You know, like, oh, I'm, let me get them ready. So she sent me to a camp right here in San Bernardino. Okay. And you met up with, like, I think it was, like, 1,500 or, or something crazy like that. Other students from L.A., San Bernardino, Oxnard, from everywhere. But they're already in high school. So yeah. the whole thing is to prep you. You go five days to prep you to high school. So every night you had to either sing dance poetry or you had to do something in yeah. front of all those 1500 students okay so i did the dancing i did a couple of the well, whatever but what kind of dance you did like the no like hip-hop like hip-hop like i think it was that song like i like to move it move it i like that song yeah can you, can you still do it no nah, nah, <laughs> i don't remember but it was the whole routine and everything so it was that one and um but one night i ended up on poetry and i remember the leader the leader of the, of the group was a senior she was a lady well not a lady a young woman okay and um but to me, it was a lady. I was 13. So, uh, I can't really remember what she looked like. <laughs> but probably, you know what I mean? But you know what I'm saying? Uh, she, she was like, she was our leader. So her job was to make sure you guys were able to do it. And I was just like, I can't do this. This is like impossible. I never right. rhymed in my life. How am I going to do it? She gave me my first two bars, bro. My first two bars. She gave them to me. I was like, it's so easy. It's like this. She gave them to me. I wrote it down. Wrote the rest of it. Read it in front of 1,500 people. The reaction I got. I feel like I've always been chasing that feeling since then. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it worked for me at that time. So, but I didn't take it serious till I was like 16. So it took me like three years. Wow. But, but it, I want to say take it serious. It was just more of a financial thing. We need, we were so broke. We couldn't even buy a couldn't computer. Even pay attention. No, we couldn't even, yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. But we didn't even have no, like he's like, like a trouble kid was saying that he recorded on a speaker. Right. I did the same thing, bro, but into a tape. I didn't even have a phone, you know? Okay. So I recorded, the speaker was my microphone, recorded to a tape with my brothers. If they're watching, I know you guys remember, we used to rap over the, the P. Diddy beats and all that stuff just to try to, you know, hear ourselves. So that's what we did. Wow. And, and you know what? What that was preparing you for? For performing in front of a lot of people. Yeah. Because think about this. You said 1,500 people. N named Kids, what? bro. Teenagers that are going to judge you. Right. Right. Now... There ain't too many rappers out there that have performed in front of 1,500 people at one time. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So that's a wonderful opportunity to get the jitters out. Yeah. You know? The butterflies. I still yeah. get them, though. Even, really? Yeah. Well, it's a good thing. For me, DJing, I don't get them anymore. You know? Sometimes I wish. I get them, but once I walk that first step up to the stage, it's gone. It's just like, I think, the buildup for it. You know? Okay. 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 That'll work, man. And uh, um, now, as far as um, how long were you there at that camp for? Five days. Monday to Friday, and then they send you back. But every night you had to perform in front of those fifteen hundred students. So just five days, yes, two. Yes, two, and then you go to you go to high school two weeks later. Oh, it's oh. like it's just like a summer thing, real quick. You go and you oh, basically shit. mingle. You, it's you. The boys stay with the boys, and the girls stay with the girls. You know, so. Ah, oh, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, now but that's uh, how it all started. So my mom, if you're watching this, is your fault. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thirteen years old, and how soon when you start going to high school did you rap at all? Not like that. Uh, people knew the people that knew. Like, cause, okay, back to the poetry, bro. I I had fans before there was internet. Well, there was internet, but I didn't. I couldn't afford it. So I okay, had. Fans. Tell us a little bit about that. You had fans before there was the internet. I was writing poetry, and guess who my fans were? All the little girls I was talking to on the house phone. Those were all my fans. Well, That's who I was spitting the poems to. I had fans before there was social media. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, like people well, don't know that, bro. People don't know that. So a lot of those girls, I don't know if you guys are watching. They probably have kids. They're married, divorced, whatever it is. I know you guys remember because yeah, I remember. They missed stuff because you're still single. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, some of them still talk to me. It's all good. <laughs> okay, with that, we're going to go to commercial. Right? <laughs> it's time for me to start drinking. Okay, so uh, once again, everybody, make sure you call somebody, take somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that Young Quicks is in the motherfucking building. We're going to come back. We're going to get a couple of drinks. So by that time, you should have enough time to go take a shower, come back butt naked, and turn on the TV, get your popcorn ready, drink a Modelo, and you're going to enjoy the next 30 minutes. We'll be back in 10. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. 
Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch. Rodium Radio. This is your deal on Rodium Radio. Grab a seat on my knee. Tony A, the wizard. This is your Theo on Rhodium Radio. The panties are popping and it's non stopping. Tony A. the Wizard.
Houston, one, two, one, two. Right about now, Easy E and Dr. Dre's in the motherfucking house. Times are getting crazy, it's really hard to choose it. The rhodium's a spot to get funky fresh music. Easy motherfucking E and my homeboy Dr. Dre. MC Ren is in effect, and you know we don't play. The rhodium is hitting, but you know you can't leave Until you get a deaf ass tape from Steve Oh Steve, oh Steve, oh Steve, just give me just one more tape Oh Steve, oh Steve, oh Steve, just give me just one more tape Oh Steve, oh Steve, oh Steve, just give me just one more tape Oh Steve, oh Steve, oh Steve, just give me just one more tape Yeah man, I came all the way down to the rhodium swap beat man To pick up one of them NWA tapes man And I talked to homeboy Steve down there man And he said I'm fresh out of taste man Man, like the NWA and Easy E music hit the Rhodium Swap Me mixtapes first. Like when we dropped our records, man, it was like it was cool putting your records out, but even though people knew who Dre was and I was and Cube and Yella before, they didn't really know who Easy was. But not until, you know, Boys in the Hood and some of that, you know, Fat Girl and L.A. is the place. That stuff hit the mixtapes, man. That's what kind of put it out there for people to know, like, what is this Easy e and What is this N.W.A. thing? So I think it was like a big, big push. The Rhodium Swap Me uh, mixtapes had a huge impact on, on hip hop and the hip hop culture because it was different. And um uh, you know, wasn't nobody doing it like that. You know, you had New York that was doing mixtapes, but you know, you had N.W.A. who was saying whatever the fuck they wanted to say. Motherfuckers wasn't doing that shit, speaking how they wanted to speak. You know, and what that did was was open up a, a lane for uh, what they call gangster rap today, and and the hip hop culture and. Uh, it really, it really opened up lanes for, for, you know, pretty much for the West Coast gangster shit to get out, and uh, nobody else was doing that, and it was just different, and, and people were scared to say what the what they wanted to say, and uh, you know, that buzz came from Steve at the Rodium Swap Meet, you know, uh, working with Dre and Easy, and, and created a, a whole plethora of good music <laughs> uh, and, and it and created a lot of uh, lanes and opened up a lot of lanes from artists like myself to be able to come out you know I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the the tree I'm a branch on the tree that, that Dre and Easy started you know and then on my branch you got Snoop the Dog Pound uh, 50 Cent Eminem and all of those guys, you know, that that's all on my branch, the chronic. And uh, that's what it created, man. Welcome back, everybody, to Rodian Radio, episode 90. And you're back at the Golden Shower Hour with Tony A. the Wizard. And we're going to go ahead and jump butt naked right back into it with Young Quicks. Young Quicks, uh, you were telling me during the break yeah. you had a Eric Sermon from EPMD story. Yeah. I think... The fans need to hear this. Uh, actually, I texted him to watch. I don't know if he's watching. So if he's watching, shout out to okay. Eric Sermon from EPMD. Um, he actually mentioned me on K Day. He came, when they when they were when the world was back to normal and they were doing shows. Uh, he had a show. What you remember? Where was that, Eric? The show? Uh, it was some, oh. it's, it's somewhere around here in LA. Okay. And and um, he invited me after Orange he mentioned County. me on K Day. It okay. was in Orange County. He but he didn't know you. No, bro. This is. If you go on YouTube right now and go K Day and you type in EPMD interview, it has like over a hundred thousand views. It almost went viral, bro. I just, it was it was a big deal at that for my city at that time. All my OG homies were calling me and be like, "Hey, that's a big deal." Right. So um, he was like, "I don't know if this kid is Mexican or not, but he yeah. can spit." So I think the fact that he couldn't tell what ethnicity I was was a plus for me, you know, yeah. because yeah. at the end of the day, you just want to be known as a recording artist. That. Of course. At course. the end of it all. And, and I, did you ever ask him where he heard of you to mention you? Honestly, when I had a conversation with them on the phone, he told me it was God. That's what he told me. He said, really? I, I don't know. Who, he says, the only thing I could think of was God. Bro, he compared me to Big Pun. I'm just going to say that. He compared me to Big Pun, okay, bro. But those, but those were his words, not those your words. Those were his words, not my so words. you can share that. Yeah. I never, 
had nobody compare me to Big Pun. You know, that's a big deal to me. I right. don't know to the average rapper. But... And I know the live chat is probably going crazy right now. <laughs> yeah, but... Los mandamos a la verga. Yeah, I, I, I don't even care about that. I'm just telling you what Eric Sermon told me. Right. Uh, now, let, okay, let's put things together. He's on K-Day. You Men don't you don't know the know guy. Him, don't know him. Mentions me. Mentions you. Reaches out on Instagram. Asks me for my phone number. Invest, invites me to his show. But I, before he invites me to the show, he calls me. And okay. that's when he told me this. And he was like, man, I don't know how I found you. He says, I think it's a sign from God. He said, but, you know, you remind me of Big Pun. That's what he told me exactly. He was like, you remind me of Big Pun. He says, I think you got something. He said, you're a star. You just got to get you to a superstar. That's what he told me, bro. Okay. I, and then I, I went to the show. Seen it. I seen Big Daddy Kane. I seen, like, legends, you know? Like, right. I was probably, me and Eric were probably the only Mexicans in the venue, bro. Okay. And, and so you met him. I met him, and then I, I, I had dinner with him the next day at a Chinese restaurant with him and his partner Bernard, Coach Bernard. If they're watching, they'll know. They know. They know. You know. Yeah, and, yeah. And he, you know, he told me a lot of things, bro. A lot of things that are probably a lot of people would get excited for, you know. And I'm just, I'm working, bro. I'm working. That's good, man. You know, well, I know that um, on his Instagram, sometimes he'll post like some, uh, I, and I hate to even say the word religious. Yeah. But like one time, I went to his page, I went to his, and he put something like. Um, um, God, and I, I want to quote it right because it was a post. I want everything to do with Jesus, or if it ain't Jesus, I don't want it. It has something, something like that. Yeah. So that kind of teaches teaches me that he has a, a love and a and a, a if you will respect for God. You know what I'm saying? And that's who he mentioned the, as far as him finding me. Really? Even though it was on the internet, or whatever he says, like I don't know. How, he said I don't know how I find you. I think it was God. And I said, me wow. too. I told him I believe in God a lot. You know. Wow. Well, you know what? If he's watching, much love, much, much love, OG, and let's get the at least recorded. <laughs> let's yeah, do it. Let's yeah. do you it. You know, that's how I met uh, DJ Scratch. Okay. Okay. Was when 1991 in Texas, uh, we toured with EPMD, and that's how I met Scratch. Now, I will say this. I thought I was a shit at being a DJ, but when I saw DJ Scratch, I was like, okay, hold on a little bit, Tony. Eh? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because this guy was like on another level yeah you know what i'm saying different two total, totally different styles yeah different you know? worlds huh yeah but yeah. he was he still is amazing so but uh okay so now you start writing oh, when did you start i asked you this before the half uh when did you start taking this serious where you actually started saying you know what i'm gonna start writing songs or i'm gonna get a producer or when i started performing um i did the talent show in my high school at the age okay, of 16. okay talk to us about that um i did uh at that time i had uh, well I, I guess it was a little group a little rap group and uh, i had a guy that i was a classmate with he was rapping in spanish and i was rapping in english uh -huh. and that was our thing we were a little duo and we performed at the talent show why well, did that talent show bro some african-american dude came through with a record label um business card we thought we were gonna get signed overnight. We thought it was that was it, you know. Right, so, right. so that I think just the fact that I was able to go to my school and still get you know love and reaction from people that actually knew me and see me every day, you know, that's when I started taking it serious. So, at the age of sixteen, I did my first performance at my high school. Okay. Then shortly after, I went to the opposite high school during lunch. Just ditched my school to go perform in front of thousands of kids again, just to show that I could do it and. And we got another good reaction. We had a big old line of girls for pictures and stuff like so. I think everything just fueled it, you know. And okay, your first talent show uh, at your school. Yeah. What did you perform? A song that we didn't even record. It was just we put the beat and we. Was it an instrumental beat of another song? Or? I think it was like at that time it was like a instrumental, but that wasn't popular. Okay. So people couldn't find it. Okay. So then you go to your this other school. During lunchtime. Okay. I ditched my school. I, I, I wouldn't encourage nobody to do it, but I left during lunch, jumped the fence from my school to go to the other school and perform in their lunch. Okay. In front of everybody. They had and no other choice. Did you perform the same song? I think at that time we performed a different song that we were working on. And that was a, was that, was there a singer called Jeremiah back in the days? Jeremiah? Yeah, Jeremiah or something like that. I don't that. remember. It was a song. He had a girl song that was very popular, R and B song, but we flipped it to rap, so it okay. worked for us. It worked okay. for us. Now you say us. That guy. It was the same guy. Okay. All right. Okay. So this was a group. I guess, but it was temporary. You know, it was just like, okay, you can rap in Spanish. He he wasn't really fluent in English, and I didn't want to rap in Spanish. You know, so we just made it work. You know, and in high school at that time, instead of us fighting against African Americans, we would battle it out music wise. Right. Right. Cause yeah. you know we've always had a you know there's always been that se se separation but we would use music right. to unite us you know see during my days we broke dance or or, or uh, we popped okay that's what we did yeah see we would have to rap battle that's how I got my name and everything from 
having to memorize my lyrics fast and being the youngest in the crew. That's how I got my name from Young really? Quicks. From were you ever? Did you ever have another rap name before that? No. Nah. That's always always young quicks. Yeah, quicks or quickie, quicks. yeah, stuff like that. Quickie. Like, yeah, that's what the girls call. Yeah, you, that's man. what that's what I'm saying. See, so that's why I didn't stick with it because I didn't want the girls to use it against me. So I said, no, nah, I'm not gonna stick with it. And you know, it was gonna be Nest Quick, bro. You know how the Chocomil, yeah. the Chocomil, that was gonna be my nickname. That, that was the nickname. Yeah, yeah. that that the, 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 my my buddies high school wanted to give me. But you know, okay, this is a story I tell everybody, bro. I I graduated a certain year. But I was the youngest in my class because I was born a, at that time. I don't know if you remember that if you were born a certain month, they would start you school early or they would start you late. Like I have mm -hmm. people that are the same age that graduated the same, the same grade as me, but they're like two years older or a year older. And it's, so I was always the youngest, bro, wherever I went. And right. I would always memorize the lyrics quick, whatever we were going to battle against the other people. I remember so that. You so know? you got a photograph or you have a photographic memory. Yeah, that's what it's. Yeah. Yeah. See, I do, but I never wanted to be a rapper. I can't remember names, though. I'm kind of the same way. You know, you know how you fix that? Everybody <laughs> listening, here's how you fix it. I used to meet people like, hey, how you doing? They used to like, oh, hi, my name is Charlie. Oh, okay. I forgot right there. <laughs> okay. So now I was taught when you shake somebody's hand yeah. and you say, how you doing? My name is Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Now I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ahora se te pega. See? Always remember, always uh, repeat. Say it, repeat it. Yeah. yeah okay. So if somebody says, my name is Gretchen. Hello, Gretchen. Hello, how Gretchen. are you? Hello, Mabel. Yeah. You know, yeah, so... See, you learn something every day. Every day, brother. Pampilo, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> how are you? <laughs> you know, but uh, Choforo, yeah. shout out Choforo. <laughs> Sounds like more like Choro. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay, now, um, you consider yourself a Chicano rapper? Consider myself a recording artist, not even a rapper. Okay. Just a recording artist because I could write music, bro. I, I've written songs. I've written songs that people sing and I can't sing. So it's a whole dip. I don't know, bro. I just I think different. You know, I could write music. Okay. I'm a songwriter, bro. Okay. Do you produce anything? No, I never touch the keyboard. Never will because I I, I want to stay in my lane. I want to perfect my craft. And I think that's a good thing. There's very few people that can do that. Uh, that can actually, uh, if you will, produce beats, write their own lyrics, engineer their own music. And even shoot their own damn videos. Yeah. You know, I know a few people that can do that. And uh, one of them is actually DJ Quick. And another guy that i known maybe now for about two years now is uh, Misfit Soto. Okay. You know, he does yeah. all of his own stuff. It really, That's really dope. impressed me uh, that he could do a lot of that stuff. Because okay. I meet guys that like to say, you know what? The reason why I don't want to produce or engineer or whatever is because they, they feel that if I give myself to, let's just say, engineering, tweaking, yeah, tambourines, yeah. and hi-hats, and crashes, and kicks, and snares, it'll take away from my creativity from rapping, yeah. from writing. And it does. But only, there's only a few people that, that, that can could, do that. that can manage it, so, yeah. so I get that. So now, you're, out, you're in high school. You do those two talent shows. So do you, in your head, thinking, I'm going to do this. Let me keep writing. Or what's the next step for you? Well, speaking on that same shows with the same guy and everything, we did our own... Well, um, a competition at the BB Kings Club. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The, the City Walk? And you had to sell tickets, bro. To You had to sell 30 tickets at $10 a pop. Anything you sold after that. And this isn't the... I'm telling you, I'm still 16 probably at that time. Right. And um, anything you sold after that, you keep it. The lady, I don't know if she messed up, bro. She gave me 100 tickets. For reals? Gave me 100 tickets. I only had to report 30. I sold all 100. I kept the money for the rest of it. So when, so when I, you know, I think that's what I was like, okay, I could do this. You know, I could get real support from real people, make real money. I got paid like $700 for a talent show, I guess you could say, you know? Right. At that time, at 16 years old, bro, nobody else is giving you $700 to go perform, bro. No. What, what, what year was this? Do you remember? Like Probably like 2007, 2008. You know what? I think it might I think I might have been there. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> Because one of the last shows like that that I went to was a Universal City Walk. Bro, and we got robbed that day. Me and my partner got robbed. We sold all those tickets. We had all the fans there, and they still gave the price money to somebody else. For real? Yeah, and the lady still, the promoter still apologized after and everything. You know? that, wh why would she apologize? Like, I don't get That's that. why it's the same thing with the soccer story. You know what I'm saying? Like, people just, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. The man it's, it's a cold team. world. It's a cold world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold world. Damn. So do you think you won? Uh, after the crowd reaction, yeah. yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say I was the greatest at that time. You know, right, I think. Right. Like, I've but gold. you did enough to win. Enough to win, yeah. I did. We put in the groundwork. Damn. I did. I wouldn't say I did because the other guy didn't do nothing. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. 
Wow. When I what about today? Do you still have to sell tickets to to perform? Nah, hell nah. I, will, I won't go. I won't leave my house unless you know. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. See, but you pay dues. Yeah. You did that, man. Yeah. That's a good thing, and some people have to do that. Yeah. And sometimes some people don't want. They to don't do want it. to, bro. I did it for years, bro. For years. Yeah. For, and then it got to a point where I, I ended up getting a song on the radio and stuff like that. To a point where people would just invite me. They would sell the tickets and be like, "You're kind of doing it. Let me put you on my set." And you come perform with me on my set to make me look good, you know? And that, yeah. that's kind of what it was. I didn't have to do nothing no more. People were just calling like, hey. And I would do it. I would do it, bro. Because I've, I've always seen the bigger picture, you know? I've, yeah. The easy part is making the music. The hard part is getting the support and getting at, all at once. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, To cross over, you, you, know? you know? And I'm glad you said this because somebody asked me. Um, and I'm glad you're getting the support, man. I, I, I really am because a lot of people were, were like, really reposting a lot of your stuff today you know and i always said this if they like you they'll support you if they like you they'll support you it goes back to you only go as far as your attitude yeah. somebody asked me uh, hey man i've been trying to do this podcasting thing and i can't even get a thousand subscribers and in less than a year you got twenty five thousand. how did that happen yeah. and i said look there's nothing special about what i do but here's the thing if people like you they'll tune in yeah that's it like there is no trick to this you know, I mean, these are toys that I had. Okay, so some people gave me some of this stuff. But uh, this table, we got for free. We, we had a small budget to get mics, cords, and a, a board. And uh, uh, we used a TV for a monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is it. There was nothing special about what I was doing. And I was supposed to have a co-host. That didn't work out. So you know what we did? We went live on YouTube. We turned it on. We said, let's go. And all I do is drink and talk shit and people tune in. <laughs> yeah. You know? They love it. They love it. But you know what? I support Rasa. Yeah. And you know what the sad thing is? And I shouldn't even mention this, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> do it. But um, you still have Rasa that will tune in just to talk shit. Talk shit. And I'm going to tell you something what Mr. D said, and I'm quoting him. Is your life really that bad? I think like, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. Is your life really Miserable. that bad that you have to tune in just to... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't pay attention, bro. I even, no, I, of course not. Of yeah, course yeah, not. yeah. You know, but, but, but I'm just trying to make a point here. Like, this guy, whoever the fuck he is, he's probably drinking drinking cheap beer <laughs> in his 40s, still living at home with his mom, <laughs> yeah, yeah. eating a box of Twinkies, yeah, yeah. Dockies, wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning because he has heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He has to use baby wipes because he's that chorro. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Small people. But I'll stop right there. Anyways. I feel you. I hope people didn't hear my last one. But, uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> so now, uh, at the talent show, what comes next for you? I'm trying to build this, this story, brother. To be honest with you, yeah. after I did that show with that guy, I went on my own. Because I saw that I could pull my own weight and I didn't. I don't like to carry dead weight, bro. Yeah, I know what you mean. At all, at all, at all. I don't like to tell people what to do. I'm not in a position to tell people what to do. But they should already know. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If we're not in the same mindset and you're right. rolling with me, you don't need to roll with me. Right. That's how I see it. You, you know, there's a quote. I forgot when I quoted it, but I said, uh, uh, how can two walk together unless, unless they are agreed? You have to be on the same mindset, on the same page. And if we're not, vamonos. You know, kick rocks and, with no shoes and no socks. Exactly, bro. You know? Exactly. <laughs> After they kick rocks, their feet are going to be looking like they've been kicking a bag of flour all day. <laughs> like they were kicking the brick wall right there. <laughs> all ashy, fucking yeah. heels cracking and everything. But yeah. anyways, uh, I don't know nobody like that. But anyways, <laughs> um, so now you decide to go solo. I decided to go solo, bro. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, let me, I'm just going to take it a little bit back. At yes. the age of 13, when I started writing the poetry, bro, there was a group called Locura Terminal in Oxnard. Okay. They were rapping in Spanish and English. They were signed to Fono Visa. They were doing it, bro. You know how I pulled up in a car with my face on it? Yes, I love that. They had a car with their face on it when I was 13 years old. No shit. I used, to, I was telling the Trouble Kid earlier, I used to chase these kids with a scooter, you know? Yeah. Like, and now I got a car with my face on it. So to me, I, I like, the fact that I seen them do it, motivated me you know I'm like yeah, i could do it yeah you know? see and what you're doing today is motivating others. i hope so i hope so because i'm not saying my way is the right way to do it i'm just but saying it's, your like, way. it's my way and and everything that i've said and accomplished to do i've done it bro you know what i want to do 
uh, when Freaky Tales blows up, my other podcast, I want to drive around in a fucking hearse. <laughs> That's what I want to <laughs> do. do. It, do it. No dead weight. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Freaky Tales on the side and yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. That'll be a dope video. Hell yeah. No, no, no video in real life. Homie. <laughs> oh, Just rolling with it. Hell huh? yeah. Promoting the- Hoping it backfires yeah, yeah, in every yeah. red light. Ba ba. <laughs> You know, that's what I want. You know, so <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, so okay, you go solo. When do you start recording, bro? That like you start saying, I'm gonna release some shit. Okay, so that's what I was gonna get to. Okay, so I started. Um, I went solo, and I started recording on my own at, at, at one of my boys on home studios. We used Cubase, bro. It wasn't even Pro okay. at that time. And um, over internet beats from SoundClick. I don't know if, if upcoming rappers remember this. SoundClick used to give you the free beats. If you didn't want to pay for them and you were broke like me, you could get the SoundClick free beats. And um, we started rapping. And eventually, I started reaching out to those artists from Locura Terminal. Right. And, and they had already seen a little demo that I had. We used to print demos with a printer, bro. Like, I did, I've done everything, bro. Anything you could. I still sell, sell CDs to this day. If you go to my website, you could buy a CD. Wow. You know, so like, so I started working. And then one of those artists from that group kind of took me under his wing. Shout out to Locura Terminal. They all show me love. But Big Tank, Big Tank Boss from Oxnard kind of took me under his wing. And, okay. and he showed me the ropes. And, and I learned from him. And from him, I ended up rolling with the Lean Like a Cholo guy when he had the hit. Okay. In 2008, 2000. I'm, bro, I'm a kid, bro. I'm 17 years old to doing this shit. Right, right. You know, yeah, bro, stage. yeah, yeah. Going with these guys everywhere, bro. Like, I, I opened up for Nelly at the age of 17 in Reno in front of 7,500 7, people at the university, bro. Nobody knew who I was, but it's me coming out as a Mexican kid. Everybody started screaming. They never seen that before. So, you know, like, I, 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 I don't know. I've always seen it, but I, I've always wanted it for my own. I'm with my own brand and my own name. You know what I'm That's saying? Awesome, so, I'm working man. for that, bro. I'm working for that. I, I love it, bro. I love your gusto. You know? <laughs> I don't know if you still use that word. Anymore, I don't think so. I don't but, uh, think that so. was more like seventies, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, I like that. Or spunk. Does he still use say that word? You got spunk, bro. Kid. Can I say something more about that Nelly story? Tell me. One of the DJs that I met that day. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say this for anybody watching, anybody that's trying to make music. I'm just gonna show you. When you don't have money, this is what you do. Keep in touch with people. Build yes. relationships, bro. One of those DJs. A regular DJ I'm telling you this is 10 years ago mm-hmm. he's a program director of that radio station now every record that I dropped since 2012 on he's played it on the radio on FM on a top 40 station yes just off of me being his friend me telling him happy father's day me checking in me just being a real person yeah. not telling him nothing else you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah That's so good, I'm just man. I just want to you know what and I'm glad you brought that up because this allows me to share some to this younger generation as well Wherever you go, a studio, uh, you go to a talent show, you go to a club, you go to a concert, make connections. It's very, very important you make connections. Um, there's a multi platinum artist that I used to DJ for, okay, like for several years. Yeah. Pay me good, treating me well. Everywhere we went, hey, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, can I get your number? Yeah. Hey, when I when I get home, hey, man, I just want to tell you thank you very much, and we that's how we stayed in touch. Always stayed in touch, okay? And those people would always reach out to me. Why do you think in this industry, can't nobody ever say in this industry, Tony A's a fucking asshole, Tony A did me fucking wrong. I've never did anybody wrong, bro. I've always showed love. Some reason you get these couple of two knuckleheads that- Happens, you know. Happens, yeah. But for the majority, for, uh, uh, for the most part, I show everybody love, they show me love. You know, I could pretty much probably go to any nightclub and get in. Yeah. Why? Because I have a good name, bro. Yeah. You only go as far as your attitude. Yeah. You know, and I've never been an asshole to anybody. I've always opened the door. There's times that security probably didn't know who I was. They're so right there. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy running the club comes out here, man. You yeah, fucking yeah. crazy. Get Kylie. this guy in yeah, here. Yeah. Because they have love for me. Yeah. And so I totally understand. So for you artists out there, please don't try to act hard. Make friends with people. Yeah. Money don't make you real, man. I don't care what they say. <laughs> I don't care what they say, bro. Right. Yeah. I know dudes that you probably think are doing it and they ain't doing nada. Is, is, say that part again and speak a little bit into the mic. I know dudes that you guys think are doing it and they ain't doing nada, bro. They get impressed by the car driving. It ain't shit. Well, they're waiting for the second stimulus check because it really was happening because their mom probably wants them out. <laughs> I don't know. Their mom I'm just saying. That's house. all I'm saying. That's all yeah. I'm saying. But, you know, they'll post pictures of their friend's food on their story, make yeah. it seem like they're the ones eating it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I get it because I see a lot of guys fronting. 
uh, uh, for the gram. Bro, all these chains that I have on for anybody watching, these were all trophies. These were all gifts. And you could bring a diamond test or everything, and it was all real. So I'm proud to wear these, bro. Okay. These were all gifts. Like, I earned them. You okay. know what I'm saying? I didn't have to spend one dime for them. I know who made them. I know what they're made of. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to prove something, bro, to yeah. the world, to myself. Because, you but know, it can I, be done. It can be done. And you don't have to lose yourself or lose anybody, you know, because well, you so get your soul will kiss ass. Bro, I've lost girls. I've lost friends, but I won't lose myself. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. That's I, good, man. You know, I'm trying, bro, the right way because yeah. these kids have a, bro, they have a long road ahead of them and this world's crazy, yes. bro. I'll tell you something that some girl told me a long time ago. She thought she was going to make it. She still ain't nowhere. And it, she said, it ain't who you know is who you blow. That's what she said. I mean, this girl swallowed more kids than Pennywise. Okay? Does she have daughters? I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing, Tony. I'm playing, Tony. <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> You're single ready to mingle. <laughs> I need to come back here. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> okay, Tony. She's still around. Anyways. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, no, but I'm there to say, where's Pennywise? Pennywise is back there. Today. Yeah, Pennywise ain't got nothing on her. <laughs> anyways, but, um, like, where are we going with this? Okay, anyways, um, so now, when your first single drops, do you remember the first single you dropped? Yeah, bro. Tell me. My first single, I can. That was my first single. Okay, well, to the world, I've been official artist since 2011, bro. Okay. So that's nine years deep. Deep. I'm nine years deep. I'm nine years deep. I'm, I'm, I've been doing this. I've been around the block 10 times, bro. So uh, that was my first single, 2011. But my first song on the radio was in 2009. Okay, tell me about how did you get your song on the radio? Because most artists today will never hear themselves on Can the I radio. Can I tell you bro. what I had to do? T tell me. You didn't tell your soul, to, right? I, no, I had to go to a meeting and play it in front of 20 DJs, bro. How, how did you get that? Like just who you knew or... Nah, from working, bro. I, I hustling, hustling, working. From rolling with the lean like a cholo guy. From you know them seeing me. Right. From them seeing me work with the locura terminal, with the spirit at that time, with everybody else that was doing it at the city. So they were like, okay, this kid's onto something, you know. So right. they, they were like, let's have a meeting. And I played it in front of all the DJs. I played two options. I had a song called her favorite song and a song called just text me. They're not. A, I don't even know if they're on iTunes and all that, but you can probably find them on YouTube. They chose her favorite song. They basically chose it, bro. It's like you go in there, you're in a, basically in a table like this, and they play your song in front of everybody. Like if you're having a label meeting. Wow. That's what it was. And they, they liked one of my songs, and they played it for like a month straight, had it in rotation. And I, I remember my buddy, was at that time, he was going to community college. He would call me. I, did, I wasn't even going to school, bro. He was calling me and telling me, like, hey, your song's on the radio. You wow. know, your song That's a the, beautiful thing to hear your song on the radio. And I'm not talking about on Spotify or YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you nah, bro. That's what radio. I'm saying. Like, I may not have millions of streams, but I got hundreds of thousands of streams on the actual radio. So it's like a whole different. That's you know good, what I'm man. saying? That's good. I'm proud of you, bro. You Thank know? you. And I don't know it's the first time we've met, but you know what? I love your story, man. And it's very encouraging. Thank you. And I love it that uh, you're giving hope to possibly uh, a, a generation that thinks that everything is just YouTube. That you could just upload it and that's it. You got to go out there and get it. Bro, I'm you, you, you have to work for it, bro. Basically 10 years plus and I'm still willing to put in groundwork. And, and, and you know what you can say in the long run? You earned it. Nobody gave it to you. I don't owe nobody nothing. Right. I know. Like how you were saying, that's how I want to be. Like nobody could say nothing about bad about Quick. He don't owe nobody money. He didn't do nobody wrong. That's that's how I, I definitely be. don't owe nobody. No you know damage. what I'm saying? If anybody, a couple of people owe me lunch. For dinner, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, you know, yeah. Okay, so add them to the list. Huh? Yeah. So 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 when is when is your first album drop? 2012. 2012. Highly demanded. Uh, how did that do for you? Real well. I had uh, Kid Frost on it. Okay. I had Big Gemini on it. Okay. I had Fingers on it. Okay. One of my biggest songs till date that has like streams on like 20 plus radio stations. I'm talking about like New Mexico, Texas, California. Mm -hmm. What is it, Vermont or something crazy like that? Like on media base. I'm talking about media base spins. It's Diamond Peace produced by Fingers. It got like 300 or over 300 radio spins on 10 plus radio mm. stations. And that's with no music video, no money behind it, no promo, bro. Like it's just me and my business partner, Hood Space Music. And. He believed in me, bro. When 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 I started rolling with the Lean Like a Cholo guy and all that, like, obviously, you know, you go your own ways, bro. Like, I think it don't work when the, the person's trying to do the same thing as you. Right, right. Does that make sense? Of course, of course. Because nobody wants, uh, and I hope I'm touching on what you mean. 
Nobody wants two Drakes. Nobody wants two Easy E's. Nobody wants two Tupacs. Is it, what you're saying is that they don't want two of the same people? No. What I'm saying is I don't think... You know how they say that Mexicans have that crab effect? They don't want nobody to go <laughs> do bigger or better things it, than them. What, it, I, explain the crab effect. The crab effect, like when we're crabs in a bucket. Okay. And we're all trying to climb out of the bucket, but there's a little crab fucking pulling you down. So... I don't want to say that's really what went down, but that's what it felt like. Like, it felt like the more that I would be exposed, that he would, the artist would put me on, the more, you know, right. issues just started coming on. Like, it was just like, hey, I'm the superstar. I have a hit song. Why do they show you love, you know? Right, right. So it's just, I think that's our issue as far as Latinos and, and Mexican-American artists. Like, bro, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's our fault. And I'm glad you're speaking on it, but I'm going to say this, okay? Because I don't think I was ever in that bucket, so I thank God for that. <laughs> so from the outside looking in, I see it. I see it because, you know, let me say it this way. And I hope people grasp what I'm saying. Don't ever strive to be better than anyone. Some people say, no, 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 I'm better. Don't ever be be different. Exactly. Be different. Be yourself. Exactly. You, you, you're already different. Yeah. Be yourself. There's only, you know, the original is always going to be worth more than the copy. Yeah. You know, so and and I think people forget that there's enough for everybody in the world, bro. There's enough shine, enough, enough shine, light, enough money, enough, enough money. women, enough, bro. Like, say, say the woman part again. There's enough women to go. Bro, on. I'm gonna tell you this. I went to Alaska, bro, and I had no idea there was Latinos in Alaska. Oh yeah, we're everywhere, bro. Bro, there was fine women in Alaska. Say fine again. Fine <laughs> women in Alaska. I've been to New York. I've been to New Mexico. I've been to Texas. I've been okay. Besides Alaska, Miami got the finest lighting women. They got an accent and everything. So they're, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I'm not thinking about that shit because everywhere I go, I see pretty women. Right. Right. You know. So if you're in it for women, you're in it for. The, I never had issues. I didn't have to rap to get women, bro. Right. That's you know. Good. That's good. So I'm, <laughs> I'm focused. I'm focused, Tony. I'm trying to make it happen, bro. That's good, man. You got your priorities straight, and most people don't. I hope so, man, because I may most, be wrong, you know? And most people don't. Most people worry about what are they going to get their next weed in Hennessy, you know, before uh, what am I going to eat? Or when am I going to fix my uh, film my next video? Or when am I going to drop my next single? Or are my lyrics really that kicking? Fuck that. Let me and go I'm some, backwards, bro. You know. I have two videos in the stash. I have two projects in the stash. And I just dropped a new project with 13 songs. And I just dropped a video last week. I've always worked with a different mentality, like... Like, I wasn't going to wake up tomorrow. Okay. So, if I died tomorrow, like, tomorrow, for some reason, God said, hey, it's your turn. Bro, you'll probably still hear, like, three albums. Like, serio. Okay. And you see videos and all that. Uh, um, for the people that may not know, how many albums do you have out there? I have to count them. HD, YFL1, YFL2, Against All Odds EP. I did a whole, a whole project with an artist from Atlanta, 13 songs. So, I'll count that one, too. I did a whole project in Spanish. I have Diablo on it. I have Kid Frost on it. I did it. Little Chicago. Is that it, Eric? Uh, there's nine. Yeah. I think there's like nine of them. Yeah, nine. Wow. And I got two unreleased. I got one. All within 10 years? That's good. All within 10 years, bro. Since 2012, eight years. Wow. That's awesome. So now you say you got two right now? I got two that are unreleased, but I just dropped one three weeks ago with 13 songs. And okay. Let's promote that one. Let's talk about okay. that one. Como se llama? Uh, um, any videos? I yeah. know you dropped. I know I saw a video yeah. where you look like you know the Chapolin dancing with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with you know, the two, with two, two yeah, 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 yeah. That one's called All Life. Um, I dropped a project called Lil Chicago, which actually stands for Oxnard. A lot okay. of people get it confused. They're like, "You're from Chicago?" Nah, if you know about the streets, you know about how we got our nickname Chicas and all that. It's Lil Chicago. That's Lil Chicago's Oxnard. And if you go Google Lil Chicago right now, the first thing that's gonna pop up in the encyclopedia is gonna say Oxnard. Mm -hmm. So um. I have a uh, project called Lil Chicago, 13 songs. I dropped three videos, bro. Uh -huh. Speak a little bit. Okay. I dropped three videos on Lil Chicago, but one of them is just a single that I threw in extra. It's called Counterfeit. I, I dropped the 13 songs and I dropped a single two weeks later called Counterfeit. So I dropped a video for that. I have a video for Lil Chicago, but the one that you saw, the one that I'm promoting right now, the one that I did on Rico and Mambo yesterday was Old Life. And it's out now. It's on YouTube.com slash Young Quicks. It's a single off of Lil Chicago. And I got two more off Little Chicago ready in the stash. So I'm That's working, dope, bro. That was the one we said, no vamos in that barco. Yeah, yeah. When I say I might take off with your bitch in a barco, because I live by the beach, bro. People, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right. So I don't know how to surf, but I could I, I could take off in a boat. <laughs> <You> feel me? <laughs> That's dope, man. Okay. Anything else you want to promote? 
anything else we're coming to a yeah yeah i want to i want to say that i actually um la area and Oxnard area in tokyo actually i did a theme song for a restaurant called tacos way okay. i want to give him a shout out because he re- bro he don't need to reach out to me he has businesses all over the world and he reached out to me he, he, he had me do the theme song it's produced by fingers shout out to fingers um mm-hmm. we're gonna shoot a video for it so stay tuned for that i did a, a theme song for a cannabis delivery service back home um, I did the Rico Mambo yesterday. I got right. two videos off of, of a little Chicago coming out. And then I got a, a whole EP um, with fingers that I'm working on. And I just need like one more record and I'm done. And and I just want to shout out everybody that's watching you for giving me the opportunity to come. And and, and LA Baseball Head for linking us up. And, and LA Baseball Head. Yeah, yes. man. He mentioned me on here like seven, eight times. So I appreciate that, man. I appreciate yeah. him. Because, you know, he was, I remember when I met him, he was just doing the baseball thing. And I was like, bro, it's, there's a bigger world, you know? Yeah. Bro, I, I took him on stage. I think he told you I, I, it was a baby bash show. And yeah. that's what I'm saying, you know, like my first concert was an MB Riders concert. Then how do I go from that to opening up for baby bash and M- basically MB Riders for MC Magic? It's the same thing, bro. It's just a cycle repeats. Yeah. I believe that history repeats, you know? Of course. Like, I feel like me and you can make a hit song. You know what I I'm saying? So. You know I what know I'm saying? So. I know so. But it's just like history repeats and it's just, you know, people got to accept it that, that this is the new generation coming in and and I just hope people n- notice that there's real ones and, you know, and, and there's, there's caca. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's caca. <laughs> That's it. All good, bro. Without mentioning nobody, you know? Of course, you don't want to mention them because we'll, we'll just give their initials after. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, brother, did you have a good time, man? Did you enjoy yeah, yourself? man. Can I actually give a sh- uh, another one more shout out? Whatever you like. I just want to give a shout out to my to my brother. Like I, I keep mentioning him, but my niece Leilani, she's probably watching. You know, I love you. I do this for you guys. My nephew Hamon. That's that's those are my that's oh, my. Okay, that's why Hamon? You know what Hamon? His name is Benjamin. Okay, Benjamin. 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 People yeah. call him Benja. You know, Benjamin. Okay, okay. I just wanted to switch it up. I call him Ham Hamon instead of Benjamin Benjamon. Is, is he chunky? No, oh, okay. yeah, they tira las piernitas, you know, the little Mexican piernitas, but that's, that's Mexican those thighs. are the loves of my lives, and I don't have no kids, so, you know, like, everything I do is for them and for everybody that believes in me, bro, I'm just trying to make it happen, bro. That's dope, man, that's, that's it. dope. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, when you blow the hell up, uh, you better answer my text, <laughs> okay? Always. I'm going to bring you some more seafood with Mariscos Aguirre, where is he at? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring you some more Mariscos. There, there he is right yeah, there, Yeah, he's right here, man. Yeah, most definitely, man. Uh, as a matter of fact, you don't mind me bringing out... Nah, show him everything I brought you, man. Okay. Show, yeah. The hat. Yeah, the YFL, man. We were taking Tony back. Hey, okay. look it. This is nice. I like this one. That's YFL. That's young, my brand, man. Young Fly Latino. Yeah. Three words that describe us. We're Young Fly Latinos, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell look yeah. at that one. That one says the metal metal, but I did it the Dodgers version for you. Oh, hell. I wasn't yeah. even sure if you were a Dodgers fan, but of course. What did you think, Angel? Speaking of the Dodgers, let me give a shout out to the Dodgers DJ, DJ Severe, man. That that dude gives me a platform. When the, the games were like full with people, he would play my music in front of 58,000 people, bro. I'm not saying 58,000 people follow me, 58,000 people know who I am. He would just, they would force to hear me, bro. Right. They had no other option. And yesterday I sent you a clip. He played my song while they, who, who thinks about that? Hey, man, the Dodgers are going to work out to my music. It don't happen, bro. Wow. You know, that's, so that's I just, dope, man. I'm, I, I'm blessed, bro. I can't complain. I'm not where I, I want to be. I encourages but... and motivates people to work as hard as you do, bro. That's good. Thank you, man. That's good. Because I, I don't have no chains. No, none of those chains. And these were earned, bro. Like, I remember rap, uh, not rapping, but talking to my friends in high school, be like, oh, if I could win $30,000 in a scratcher, I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go. Bro, once you see that type of money, you're like, man, you see, you yeah. know. I saw one of those at Ross. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to go back and get it. I don't know if it's real, pero... <laughs> no, maybe not. Maybe go to Costco. Costco got the deal, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, Costco got the deal. <laughs> you know, sometimes they're not real. Might turn your neck green. No. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna... No, I, I don't want no jewelry, homie. Um... No, nah, these, these are trophies to me. It's like winning a Grammy. Next step is a Grammy. See, these are trophies. Be, like yeah, these are your trophies, see? Yeah, Yoda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chucky. Yeah, he's pissed off over there. Yeah, but so. after you get this, you're like, I want more, bro. I want houses. I want businesses. I want... You know what I'm saying? That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. So everybody, Young Quicks is ready to uh, mingle. <laughs> and he's single. So hit him up on IG. On IG at Young Quicks. Yes, IG Young Quicks. And you have a YouTube page? Slash Young Quicks. Everything Young Quicks. I got a website, the official youngquicks.com. Twitter, everything. If you can spell young and you can spell quicks, you'll find me. Anyway. Okay. 
Cool. And you spell it just normal. Normal, right? normal, no we I'm not that fancy, man. Okay, okay. Other than that, uh any more shout outs? Anything else? My jefa. Okay, to jefa. My jefa, her birthday's coming up September twenty third. I love you. Awesome. Happy birthday. I'm blessed to still have you around. You and my brother, my brother, I keep mentioning him. Your, your birthday September twelfth. I know I didn't forget, bro. I got you. Much awesome. love, man. That's, that's my twin. Me and him are the same age for a couple months, so that's my twin. Awesome. Then I'm going to give a shout out to Trouble Kid. Yeah, Trouble Kid, of course, yeah. man. Thank him for coming out. And uh, also to Bella for coming out and joining us. Yeah. Uh, the hottest female out there. And uh, you females need to step your game up. And I'm even talking to some of you uh, kind of rappers. Yeah. Some of you rappers that don't know how to rhyme. Exactly. <laughs> Just because you rhyme cat with hat doesn't know. Anyways. All right. Other than that, uh, Erica, her manager, thank you for coming out. And Aguirre, Mariscos. Mariscos Aguirre. Mariscos Aguirre, thank you very much. Homie, your name? Eric. 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 Hood Space Music. Hood Space Music. Hood Space. I was, I was going to say MySpace, but it's Hood Space. Hood Space Music. Let me put my mask. been around since then. Yeah, that'll yeah. work. That'll work. Yeah. And uh, let me go ahead and give my shout-outs to John Motherfucking Elkins for making all this possible. Uh, um, John Motherfucking Elkins is the man behind everything here. So once again, um, uh, Shout out John. He he tried Camarones for the first time, man. From yeah, Camarones it, from down south, huh? Yeah, from down south. He loved it. He loved, he loved it. it. Yeah, yeah. And He's Mexican fact, now. <laughs> we're gonna jump him in. <laughs> um, okay, and then uh, my brother Spice Smuggler, um, my co-host on Freaky Tales, and my son Beast Scandalous for helping me promote this. And don't forget, on Friday, we got Freaky Tales coming up. Freaky. We got some whole new topics. On freaky tales it's not we're not talking about freaky like it's dirty but freaky like it's spooky okay tony i just got one shout out before yes. you, i get cut off or anything i want to give a shout out to my off-duty police officer that does my bodyguard work some, once in a while he sponsors me and everything he told me tony if you ever need anything he got you i can't say his name because he works for the police force All good. but i got you gracias you and your snow bunny that are watching saludos saludos so uh other than that uh if i didn't mention you it's because i didn't mention you but other than that once again much love much respect we'll go ahead and see you on friday freaky tales make sure you subscribe follow us on instagram freaky tales podcast see you guys later much love much respect friday and then sunday we're back here on rodeo radio and we out thank you Gracias.